Good evening and welcome to the Pajaro Valley Unified School District's Board of Education's um, board meeting for Wednesday, August 28th. I am now calling this meeting to order at 7.19 p.m. Uh, welcome to PVUSD's board meeting. We have translation in Spanish. If you need that support, bienvenidos a la reunión de la Junta Directiva de PVUSD. Disponemos de transición en español. Si necesita ese apoyo, consulte a Yarena Lopez. This meeting will be live streamed and recorded. If someone would like to speak to an item on the agenda, they must complete a speaker card and submit it to Eva Renteria prior to the agenda. Once that item has begun, cards will not be accepted for that item. Each speaker will have two minutes with the total time for public input on each agenda item to be 30 minutes maximum. I also see a lot of new faces here tonight, so I want to take a moment to establish some ground rules. There may be differences of opinion, sometimes strong differences. Please give those speaking the same respect that you would like to receive when you are speaking. This will allow everyone to be heard and the board to conduct its necessary business for Pajaro Valley Unified School District. All right, I'm gonna move us now to 3.2. I will ask Trustee Daniel Dodge, Jr., to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Trustee Dodge, Jr. I'll now move us to item 3.3, superintendent comments. Uh, Dr. Heather Contreras, our superintendent of PVUS Schools, will now make a few comments. Good evening. It's good to see so many faces in the crowd. I just wanted to share that we started our new school year, as you know, and it was a wonderful start to the school year. I visited nearly all of the school sites in the first few days and saw many happy students, smiling faces, um, administrators and teachers and classified staff who were really building relationships with the students um, there and, and things looked really good. It was a really great day. Some of the things that I saw um, were included a red carpet roll out at PV High School where they had a, a red carpet and some mariachis playing to welcome students at both Watsonville High and Pajaro Valley High School as well. We had 100% attendance at one of our schools, Rio Del Mar, on the second day of school, which was astounding, pretty much unheard of, yes. Um, and we, as you notice, our t-shirts, we've rolled out an attendance campaign. The slogan on the back of the t-shirts is actually designed by one of our students. Um, and that campaign is focusing on building relationships, getting students in school so that they can learn and honoring the learning of all. Uh, we also have started the informational campaign on our Measure M bond. Uh, that bond was approved to go on to the ballot in May by our Board of Education. And we are hoping that that um, bond will be able to do things that have been identified in these meetings by students, such as a performing arts center at Pajaro Valley High School. Uh, I met with six of our students at the high school level in a superintendent's advisory council. And the students advised me on how the first days of school were going, uh, what things were working and what things were not working so well for them. It was a positive meeting. And later we'll hear about our very first ever inter-high council meeting uh, from our new student representative who will be introduced shortly. We had a bus accident this week and um, it was devastating. However, I do wanna call attention to a team of people who worked quickly and that there were no injuries because of their quick actions. And at a future board meeting, we'll be honoring those people. It was really quite impressive what happened um, and, and the quick responses and the fact that no one was hurt. And then lastly, I want to thank the Board of Education for their time this past Saturday. We met for a full day to work, uh, to continue the work of finalizing our board governance handbook, which we'll hear more about later this evening. 
Uh, we also did a review of our budget to be prepared for some of the decisions we'll be making around our declining enrollment. It was a really positive day. This was the second Saturday that the board has dedicated to this work, and I want to thank them for their time and their uh, dedication to um, building a strong governance team. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Contreras. We'll now move us to 3.4 governing board comments. Um, this is now time for members of the Board of Education to make comments on standing committees and other comments. And we will start with Trustee Bolano Scow. Yes, welcome everybody. Hello. Thank you. It's great to be back in the school year. I want to welcome everybody back. I want to give out a shout to our new principal at Pajaro Valley High School, Todd Wilson, and his new team there. Off to a great start. Really turning that school around. And, and we're going to bring a lot more community partners back to that school. I already hear people are coming. The gates are open. Uh, and Todd's doing a great job building a collaborative culture. Uh, and I want to thank him for stepping up and, and taking on a big job because our community need, needed him to do that. I am going to be very excitingly campaigning for Measure M so we can finish the, the build out at Pajaro Valley High School. Pajaro Valley High School needs a theater. Pajaro Valley High School needs a swimming pool. And we need to rebuild many of the schools in our district all across through all the areas. Measure M is vital to making that happen. So please, uh, please do whatever you can to help spread the word about Measure M so we can rebuild and complete building some of our schools. I also want to thank our superintendent for the budget presentation, a very accurate and objective presentation we got and looking forward to hearing about the budget committee. I have uh, long wanted to be a, a bit of voice to bring democracy and transparency to our budget. If we're going to have to need to make some spending adjustments, the public needs to see the budget, needs to be as much input as possible. Uh, we need to have parents, we need to have community members involved so we can make the best decision possible. And I will always advocate that the cuts are as far away from the classroom as possible. Final thing, if you are in fourth grade or above and you want to join up, uh, the El Sistema Youth Orchestra is accepting new recruits. You can show up to EA Hall Middle School on Wednesday, 3.30 p.m. Come to EA Hall. Come find me. I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bolano scow We'll now move to Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. Um, recently, I went down uh, to visit our um, friends at the trades in Castroville and um, Superintendent Contreras um, and staff joined us down there where we talked about the bond. Um, so we're hoping that the bond will pass so that we could finish the projects at Pajaro Valley High School, bringing equity finally to that campus. Um, I also went to the Valencia back to school night. It was wonderful. I'm glad to see all the families and kids there. Everyone was very happy to be back to school. There's a construction project going on that was unexpected, and so we look forward to that concluding soon. Um, and we and I did attend the retreat um, where we did study the bond. I mean, study the budget. I'm sorry, um, and worked on team building and building um, a governance handbook for this board. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. And well, now we'll move to Trustee Dr. Holm. Good evening, everyone. Um, so, like my, my colleagues, I attended the retreat. Great, you know, conversations about how we can better serve our community by, you know, through collaboration with each other. Um, also attended our Pajaro Valley Education Foundation meeting. Um, we're displaying the tiny home at the county fair. And, you know, as a board, we were talking about, you know, discussing how we send the tiny home to its final destination in a, in a way that you know, is mindful of the input of our students and community on how they wanted to see that done. So that's it. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee Daniel Dodge, Jr. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to see everybody here. This evening, always good, you know, good to hear people's voices, whether we agree or not. So thank you this evening. Uh, thank you. I'd like to quickly say thank you, Supervisor Felipe Hernandez, for Working to get Paulson Road open, you know, I know you've worked on that the last couple months, so I want to say thank you for getting that back open for our constituents on the, you know, the Pinnell Lake area. I'd also like to say congratulations to Damana Vides, who was uh, chosen to be our next city manager. Um, Damana, you know, is a lifelong Watsonville resident, and she believes in PVSD projects and infrastructure just like I do. 
I also look forward to the Watsonville High School bleachers and press box and girls softball bathrooms to be finally completed. So hopefully all that's done next next year in March. I'd also like to thank Watsonville City Council uh, City Council Member Montesino for working on crosswalks and infrastructure around the Radcliffe area. Uh, Watsonville City Council Member Casey Clark for working on to make our roads better around the Miniway area. As a lot of people know, it's pretty hectic in the Miniway EL Hall EL area, and you know we're working on that. And also, just to kind of echo some of one of my colleagues is saying, Measure M. For the last two, three years that I've been here, you know, infrastructure is very important at Watsonville High School. For years, I've been receiving emails about air conditioning and how hot it is. It gets in the classrooms, whether in the Mellow Center or other uh, other buildings in the area. And so this is this is it. You know, this is your opportunity to work on the air conditioning. And so hopefully, everybody could come out and support. Measure M, you know, there's a lot of need in the Watson area and my colleagues also know the schools that they represent that we need to upgrade our infrastructure. And so hopefully, you know, we're about voting and action. And so this is an opportunity for everybody to do their part. So please support Measure M. Uh, voting starts in October. So hopefully once everybody gets their ballot, they vote yes on Measure M. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Trustee Flores. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out tonight. Um, I also attended um, our meeting on Saturday. I am excited to hear uh, the rollout of this governance handbook. And I also wanted to say thank you to our city of Watsonville, um, Public Works Department, um, the crosswalk be light beacon at Kingfisher for um, Landmark Elementary is working this year. And so it's getting our kids to school a lot safer. And I just want to let community members know if you are struggling in any area of town, just reach out and we will do what we can to work very closely with City of Watsonville for those safe school routes for our kids. We want them to be able to get to and from um, to school and home safely. And I also want to say thank you to our amazing PVUSD team that worked so quickly to ensure the safety of our students who were involved in that accident. Um, I, kept, I kept hearing great things about um, our bus driver acting very quickly to uh, ensure that our kids all were safe. Um, and so thank you to our, our whole team that was involved with that. And I look forward to this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Um, so after a series of events in our PBUSD community, I want to recognize tonight in my comments some people that deserve recognition including from feedback that I received from community members who were on site at yesterday morning's school bus accident as residents of that area, I want to acknowledge several people. Amy Gutierrez, the school bus driver driving the bus, who is deservingly being hailed as a heroic, commendable, and very professional person and school bus driver. Some of the feedback and comments I have been given is that Amy Gutierrez was composed, worried, and held it together. Some of the community members that were there think that at the time, Amy may not have fully realized the car hit the school bus directly where she was seated. Amy immediately notified PVUSD and Aptos Junior and Aptos High Schools. As PVUSD staff arrived to assist with the situation, Amy was able to relay quickly and readily what had happened. Additionally, PVUSD staff were also amazing in organizing how to proceed and stayed until vehicles and students and parents were attended to. The agency response from fire, sheriff, CHP, and Watsonville PD was quick and professional as well, and we thank them. I'm sure that as Amy Gutierrez reflects on yesterday's events, she will feel aches and pains of the accident, but the community members who observed her and what was happening hopes she feels better knowing her quick actions saved many lives. And I hope she recognizes that too. This local community would like this board and PBUSD to recognize Amy by her actions and how she aided in keeping the situation under control as well as keeping the many students and parents calm. Amy Gutierrez truly deserves an honorable recognition from all of us. On another note, I want to state for, uh, for the public record that Vice President Trustee Soto has an excused absence from this evening's meeting. 
Trustee Soto's sister, Lucy Soto Morales, has recently passed away. I was fortunate to have the opportunity yesterday to spend time with Trustee Soto and his family. And while the family is very grateful for the outpouring of support for their family during this very difficult time, their family is deeply grieving for their loss. I also want to recognize Lucy, Lucy Soto Morales for her over 30 years of work in PBUSD as an instructional aid and support. Lucy retired from PBUSD in 2009. On behalf of myself and our colleagues on the PBUSD Board of Education, I know we all extend our deepest gratitude for Lucy's years of service and work here at PBUSD and our deepest sympathy to the Soto family for their loss. And lastly, I want to also acknowledge the donation from South Bay Guitar Society for Pajaro Middle School for 24 guitar, gu guitar kits and $1,170 in proceeds from the benefit concert. Now we will move to item 3.5, the introduction of our 24-25 student trustee and administration of the symbolic oath. This will be presented by our superintendent of schools, Dr. Heather Contreras, who will speak on the process and introduce the selected student trustee so we can administer the oath. Good evening. So this year we had uh, followed our same process that we follow for the student trustee to the board position. And we had 21 applicants for that position. Uh, that was narrowed down with the help of our former student trustee to six applicants who interviewed and presented their ideas of what they would bring to the role of student trustee to the school board. Um, Daniel Escada was selected of those six and has so far done an amazing job representing himself, representing the schools, and representing, most importantly, the voice of the students. He is leading um, a, a team of five other students who also interviewed, who were all stellar as well, and they're helping to give input and voice into um, what the students see needs to happen for their schools. Uh, in addition, he has been leading an in, and will be for the year be leading Inter High Council, which will be a collaboration of all the high schools uh, to give input so that when he reports out, we're hearing from all of the schools. With that, I welcome Daniel Escada to the new position and our board president, Georgia Acosta, will swear him in. Good. We're on. All right. Daniel, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, too. Okay. Can you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Daniel Escueda. I, Daniel Escueda. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. That I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well that and that I will well and faithfully and faithfully discharge the duties upon discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter which I'm about to enter congratulations sir thank you Okay. Good evening. Good evening to the board. Good evening to the board, Superintendent Contreras, and everyone here in attendance. My name is Daniel Esqueda. I'm a current senior at Aptos High School. It is an honor to have been chosen to serve as this year's student trustee. I would like to express my gratitude to Superintendent Contreras for allowing this opportunity to serve as this year's trustee, as well as Alicia Jimenez for her unwavering support throughout this process. I am profoundly motivated to collaborate with all students within our district to ensure that their voices are not only acknowledged, but also respected and valued. 
Through open communication and proper representation, we can work together to develop and refine our district to truly fit the needs of our students, parents, faculty, and most importantly, the community that we serve. With that, I eagerly, I eagerly anticipate the opportunity to engage with new members of our community and to connect with the students whom I hold in the highest regard. Thank you. If the friends and family with, of uh, student trustee Esqueda can come forward, we can take a picture with all of you here, please. All right, we're all back. Wonderful. Welcome, Daniel. Um, now we will move to item 3.6, our Red Apple Award, and uh, we will have Dr. Heather Contreras, our superintendent of PBUSD Schools, present on this item. I'm sorry, we will be turning it over to our PIO, Alicia Jimenez. Thank you. I get to do the fun part. Um, uh, today I'm here to, um, we're going to honor four staff members who were um, nominated by their peers. And um, the first one I'm going to nom uh, ask to come forward is Christina Coda. She's the accounting supervisor and she is winning the Red Apple Award as the administrator. <laughs> Christina exemplifies integrity, particularly in her role of ensuring alignment with our district's policies. Her ability to clearly explain the potential consequences of noncompliance demonstrates her admirable capacity to manage complex, 
complex situations with professionalism and fairness. Her skill in guiding others to distinguish right from wrong while upholding strong ethical standards is truly commendable, reflecting both her dedication and her exceptional ability to lead with integrity. Today we are honoring Christina Cota for representing the core value of integrity. Thank you. And you could still hear me, I could hear myself. This, this time around we received a lot of nominations, so we are actually uh, uh, recognizing also a, a site administrator, and I would like to call forward Palmira Gallo, assistant principal at H.A. Hyde Elementary. <laughs> so what I'm reading is actually what was uh, written about them in their nomination, so. Palmira Gallo, she is the most kindest, positive, and helpful first person in the universe. She knows all students by name. Our Hyde families love and trust her. Her passion, expertise, professionalism, love, and excitement for school's life is admirable. She truly is the sunshine at a, uh, Hyde Elementary. And Ms. Gallo today is being honored for representing the core value of empathy. Congratulations, Ms. Gallo. And we're gonna take a picture first with you three and then we'd like to invite all of the family and friends that came with Ms. Gallo forward. I'm not sure if the next person made it. Uh, she did have to go to an event and may have been stuck in traffic, but our classified person, excuse me, yes, is Graciela Lomeli. She's a librarian at Cesar Chavez Middle School. Did she make it? Graciela is the perfect example of what a core value looks like. She works with integrity, empathy, grace, and unity. She's excellent with all her duties and goes beyond her duties to help as much as she can. She guides with grace, and today we're honoring her for representing the core value, grace. Congratulations, Graciela, and we miss you. We'll make sure you get the, um, the apple. And the certificated winner is Amalia Mayo Ruiz. She's a teacher at Pajaro Middle School. Yes, congratulations. She wasn't able to be with us tonight either. Um, and this is what they wrote about her. She took initiative and made sure that the teachers at Pajaro Middle School had what they needed to start off the year. She has been a unifying force because of her experience and knowledge. 
And today we're honoring Ms. Mayo Ruiz for representing the core value of unity. Thank you. <laughs>
Since then, she has been the director of an extended learning center for Carmel Middle School, a fourth grade teacher, and a high school English teacher. Additionally, she has served as the coach for the speech and debate team for the migrant program through Monterey County Office of Education. She holds a bachelor's degree in human communication from California State University, Monterey Bay, and a master's of arts in education also from California State University, Monterey Bay. Her credentials include a single subject credential in English and an intern credential in administration. We are excited to welcome this highly qualified educator to PVUSD, go Grizzlies. Congratulations. Announcement number two, um, on behalf of Superintendent Dr. Contreras and District Administration, we are pleased to announce Ms. Margarita Ponce's promotion to Director of Fiscal Services. Ms. Ponce has worked for the PBUSD for over 20 years with extensive experience in finance, accounting, budget, payroll, benefits, as well as income and expenditure projections. Ms. Ponce establishes and maintains great working relationships with everyone she meets. Ms. Ponce has a deep understanding and appreciation for the PVUSD community and maintains a student-focused mindset when working with staff to achieve positive outcomes for the district and our students. We are proud to welcome Ms. Ponce as our new Director of Fiscal Services. Congratulations. And that concludes our report out of closed session. We will now move to item 7.1. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address issues that are not on our agenda for this evening. Please know that the Brown Act prohibits the board from engaging in discussion for non-agendized items. However, we are listening. Each speaker will have two minutes with the total time for public comment as a maximum of 30 minutes. I also want to take the moment to let the public know that we have heard you and we have moved this item for public comment up on our agenda. With that, do we have any public speakers for public comment? Yes, we do. Okay, so I'll call uh, six speakers at a time. So if you guys can line up, I'm gonna call the first six. The first one is Bill Beecher, Rachel Hitchcock, Brendan Denise, Bring up my program. Bobby Pels, Christine Hong, and Sherry Alselmi. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. Enrollment, it's down 22% in the last five years. It's gonna go down another 3,000 or 21%. That means we'll be almost half of what we used to be. Wages for the last five years have been going up, indicating we've been hiring people at a time when we're losing students. Occupancy. We only occupy 58% of the potential seats that we have. It'll be even less as we lose more and more students. Right now, 12 of our 33 schools have less than 60% occupancy. Several are under 50%. Measure M suggests spending $365 million on new classrooms, 28% of the total. That does not address the schoolroom excess and it does not address closing schools. This is what I see this board as. So a call to action. This board must make decisions on what schools to close. This board needs to decide what will be in Measure M. We've heard nothing. This board must insist on reining in spending and reducing headcount to match the declining enrollment. My take, this board is afraid to tell students, parents, teachers, we're gonna close some schools. This board does not want to face the yells that come with closing schools. Oakland and, and San Francisco could tell you a lot about that. So, you wanted to be on this board? Act like it. Now, why can't you act? Simple. 
the agenda committee blocks any substantive discussion of this type and keeps it off the agenda. The board needs to go after Georgia and get some of this stuff on the agenda. Thank you. Let's go, Bill. Good evening, uh, Dr. Contreras and board members. Um, this year I was excited to begin teaching science at a Mesty Elementary because I am teaching finally in a room with a sink after teaching 10 years in a portable without one. I was even more excited because I found out on Tuesday, August 6th at 3.45, an incredible teacher named Caitlin Fossey was told in an email that she would not be an ELD coach this year, but instead be placed in a classroom at a Mesty. While she was shocked and coming to terms with this, I was beyond thrilled to get to work with such a talented and dedicated human. She worked tirelessly on Wednesday and Thursday to get her classroom ready as she had all of her teaching materials in storage several hours away. She continued to work. She attended MSD's PDA, PDA on Friday and was committed 100%. <sighs> Despite the fact that on Friday afternoon, a long-term sub placed in a RISE classroom at MSD went to the DO saying he wanted to sub in that classroom instead. No one in HR told Caitlin she was going back to her coaching position until she spent the first two days of school teaching 35th graders. This is frustrating because she was told by HR that the students need a quality teacher, and yet then she is replaced by an uncredentialed teacher after starting the job. She was never asked what she wanted, which was to stay at a Mesty. Intervention teacher Wendy Baker had the exact same experience. Tosa Justice Sokolis, who can no longer support teachers with the rollout of new science curriculum, and Tosa Rhea Hurt were told the same thing. I know Tosas are teachers, and I want teachers in the classroom, but my problem is the process. HR acts as if teachers are numbers and not people. I am brokenhearted the way we continue to be treated without respect. So please, will you support us in recruiting new teachers? I would like you to look into the methods and processes of recruitment in our HR department. For example, it takes many weeks for positions to be posted on EdJoin. Jobs are some not, sometimes not posted at all, like the science position I wanted to apply for last spring. Jobs are posted with dramatic errors, like right now the freedom position is listed as 0.9 and 0.6 at the same time. Thank you for your time. Uh, Brandon, Denise, uh, negotiations chair for the PVFT. Um, I'm going to speak later, so these comments will be pretty brief, but I just wanted to start the year by saying that it's a personal goal of mine to see people for who they are first as a human before I see what they do or what their job is. And in saying that, I do want to extend my condolences and let Oscar know my heart goes out to him. Um, that's just really unfortunate and sad. That's really all I wanted to say, but Bill's presentation, I also want to honor Bill too, because I don't always agree with what he says, um, but I appreciate him. We, we, we need someone like Bill here, um, because we keep hearing about this budget crisis and declining enrollment, but when you go talk to teachers at the site who are teaching a TKK combo or a K1 combo, and there's not enough paras and there are not enough teachers, I just can't reconcile how we have a budget crisis and we might potentially need to close schools and look at all this money that's gone to staffing, but go visit a classroom, which some of you board members, you don't respond to your emails, you don't visit classrooms, and there's an election coming up. So we really need to take a clear-eyed view at this and stop running around like the manufacturing this crisis when you talk to our teachers and visit the sites. We don't have overages, we have shortages. Uh, Bobby Pels, Watsonville High. I'm here to speak on the CRE contract. Two weeks ago, we had our district-wide professional development in Pahoa Valley High School, and to kick off that event, Dr. Contreras shared a few words. In her speech, she said, teachers know what is right for their students. I could not agree more, but I don't just know what's right for my students because I'm a teacher. I know what's right for my students because I'm the one doing the work. This is my sixth year of teaching ethnic studies. I'm the one who all those years ago sat in a room with just three other teachers trying to figure out how to create an ethnic studies class out of nothing. I'm the one who participated in workshops with Dr. Tintiago Kubales and the CRE organization to ensure that our students have the best and most authentic possible experience. I'm the one who has spent countless hours working with my colleagues to grow this program into what it is today. And I'm the one in the classroom teaching ethnic studies to over 100 students every single day. 
There is nobody more qualified to know what is right for my students than me. Not Doug Kaplan, not Gil Stein, not Ross Shorenstein, nobody. So it makes me angry that I have to keep coming here to tell you what is right for my students only to be denied and ignored because people who aren't doing the work matter to you more than I do. I'm aware that I'm not a doctor, that I don't have trustee in front of my name, and I'm not a president of anything, but I'm a darn good teacher. You might not agree with me, you might not like me, but you absolutely owe me the dignity and respect as a professional. I've earned that. Dr. Contreras is absolutely correct. I do know what is right for my students. It's for you to show that you support ethnic studies and bring back CRE. Thank you. My name is Christine Hong. I'm with the Center for Racial Justice at UC Santa Cruz. Um, Dr. Contreras, I'd like to address my comments to you. <clears throat> In this moment when we have AB 101, which mandates the teaching of ethnic studies, it doesn't do to have a gradualist approach to the rollout of ethnic studies. It came to our attention that one of the reasons that you gave for holding back on the realization of ethnic studies locally was the possibility that AB 2918, which is an anti-ethnic studies bill, might pass. Now it didn't. It was suspended, okay? This is a deeply flawed piece of legislation. The first draft wasn't even AB 101 compliant. Okay, it was like non-compliant with existing law. And so how do we explain this? Actually, I want to draw from um, the Ethnic and Racial Justice Caucus of the California Teachers Association, which described this anti-ethnic studies piece of legislation as undemocratic, hostile, misleading, and racist. Okay, and it bypasses the ability of there being responsiveness to local communities. CTA came out against this legislation, and we know from speaking to our aides that Don Addis consulted with individuals who were opposed to ethnic studies in SLO. That is not a democratic consultative process. You shouldn't be consulting with anti-ethnic studies forces when there is a law mandating it. So why would you align yourself with this? I wanna say this, ethnic studies delayed is ethnic studies denied and you do this community a disservice. Good evening, my name is Sherry Anselmi and I am the parent of a seventh grader <coughs> at Watsonville Charter School of the Arts and I'm actually here to express my immense gratitude towards the Expanded Learning Opportunities Program. My daughter had the most incredible summer. She attended three weeks of day camp, learning about agriculture, animals, filmmaking, she practiced leadership skills, teamwork, and she had a blast. She then attended a sleepaway camp for one week, learning to push her limits, take calculated risks, and appreciate nature. And to wrap it all up, she spent one week in DC. It was a magical and powerful way for her to learn and appreciate our country's history, both the ugly and the beautiful, and the total cost of all of this was approximately $10,000. I understand that a handful of individuals who work within the program, including Nancy Zuniga and Jen Littleton Bruno, were instrumental in advocating for and writing a grant that ensured that unused COVID funds would be utilized to enrich PBUSD students' summer learning experiences. So to them, and all their staff, a huge heartfelt thanks. And my hope and my challenge to you, the board of PVUSD, is that PVUSD, possibly the city of Watsonville, and of course parents, work together to create a way 
for PVUSD students to have access to summer learning opportunities in 2025. Thank you. The next six public speakers are Barbara Marchesalt, Ixel Barasa, Maximiliano Barasa, Giselle Lopez, Mark Mendoza, and I believe Maria G. Z. Good evening, Dr. Contreras, Board of Trustees, Bobby Marchsalt, parent, teacher in the district here. Um, it's been a great start to the year. A uh, lot of good things happening. Thank you all for the work you're doing and the uh, support of us. I'm excited about the year ahead. That being said, um, I do want to add my voice again to the, the chorus of people encouraging you to relook at the CRE contract, and that's why I'm here tonight. Um, you know, I did hear you say a couple times uh, in the beginning of the week that, that you have uh, Dr. Contreras' uh, family who are teachers and that you listen to teachers. And I both appreciate that and have been struggling with it because I'm not always feeling that right now. Doesn't mean it's not true, but that's not what I'm feeling. And getting our way isn't what means we're heard. That's not what I'm necessarily looking for. Um, but I was disappointed when I watched back the July board meeting that I wasn't able to attend to find out that the committee that had been put together to look into what was going to happen, which our understanding was that would be an option, was told that we were not even going to, that they, I'm not on it, but we're not even going to be able, that's my understanding, to look at this as an option. I know you may feel that you have a majority of a board who uh, isn't supportive, and maybe that's why, but at the same time, I would love to encourage, I would like a superintendent who doesn't just go with what the board majority they may feel, but who pushes back and who's willing to say, hey, I'm going to let this committee decide, and if they decide something different, that's okay, but if they do that, one thing that I've heard in multiple articles, I think that was incorrect, that I, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, was that there was a unanimous 7-0 uh, vote. That is not true. There was never a vote on the CRE contract. And so what I would say is let it come back up and let there be a vote and let's see where each individual member stands. Let it come if that's what the committee says and let the board stand beside the decision that each individual will make on that. That's what I am requesting. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Ishel Barraza, and well, looks like we're off to a pretty bad start this school year. You've been ignoring the kids for a whole school year. You're sucking the soul out of the students. You're teaching kids that their voices don't matter. Dr. Contreras, you created a student committee. Are you going to ignore their voices like you've ignored ours? There's student voices right here. If you want to listen to students, start by listening to us. Your watered-down idea of ethnic studies is going to make students Children of color feel unseen. Is that what you want? You want to undermine people of color? You want to undermine children? All of us are tired of this. If you don't want to, if you don't want to fight and stand up for the kids, we'll find someone who will. We'll vote you out if you continue to ignore us. And also, I want to bring up the fact that you, that you, all of you approved the minutes to limit our voices just shows that you don't want to listen to student voices. As a student, I find it appalling that you as a school, you as school board members don't want to hear the people your actions affect. Bring back CRE. Hello board, for the 10th time, my name is Maximiliano. Crazy how fast time flies when you're busy ignoring the community, am I right? <laughs> However, I'm sure you know as well as I do that the community is very unhappy with you. Turns out, when you ignore the community, when you limit the amount of time that we have to speak, you cause animosity. You know, surprising. No. You have seen many students mobilized because of your inaction and you will see many more in the months leading to November. At this point, I believe it's finally time we get rid of you. You have shown that you're not capable of working with the community. So remember, in November, when the community is judge, jury, and executioner, they will not vote in your favor. Nothing short of you stepping down will change our minds now. Thank you.
Good evening, Board of Trustees. My name is Giselle Lopez. I have been going to the board meetings for a while now, and I noticed that every time students go to speak up to, about bringing back the CRE contract, you ignore them. Sometimes you don't even look at them. You instead choosing to stare at your computer. Vice President Soto, who's unfortunately not here today, previously said, you have to understand that we as a board have a different priority. What, what exactly is that priority? I sure hope it's not taking pictures. And why is it more important um, than listening to the students who you, why is it more important to you to listen to, fuck, sorry, I'm sorry. Why, and why is it more important than listening to the students who you're supposed to serve? When will you listen to us and bring back the CRA contract? If you continue to ignore us, we will remember and we'll vote you out in November. Also, I hope, I hope you know that most people in this room, if not all of us, think it's ridiculous that you put a 30 minute a 30 minute a 30 minute limit on us um, stop trying to limit our voices be, our voices because it only makes us louder Hello, board. I don't think I need to introduce myself because you've seen me enough times. Everyone here, you've seen more than once. That should say more than enough how much everyone here cares about the CRE renewal. Now, Superintendent Contreras, I looked up what a superintendent job is, and the definition I got from California School Board Asso Association was promotes the success of all students and supports the effort of the Board of Trustees to keep the district focused on learning and achievement. Now, tell me this. How can students succeed when they're all own superintendent is holding back students from accessing future ethnic studies classes. And to that same definition, the board is in charge of making this school district a learning and achievement place. But what happens when that same board takes away the education of students to succeed through ethnic studies? Then is there really a school board or just people in power with no real knowledge of what their job stands for? You guys have answered me that. If you have a job and say you're passionate about it, then fulfill your duties and listen to the students because at the moment, the students are doing a better job at doing your job. Um, hello, um, I'm Maria Garcia from Watsonville High School and I haven't gone home the, since like 8 a.m. I've been at, I went to school, then I went to cross country practice, and then there wasn't enough time to go home since I live a mile away, and my parents weren't home yet, so I had to walk over here and wait at the library. So I haven't gone to shower, I haven't gone to do anything yet, I haven't eaten yet. So I've just been outside at, at the library just waiting for this board meeting. And I thank you guys for starting it early, like starting it earlier so I can go home and eat and shower. But it's not fair that we have to come here still because we come here to tell you guys that this isn't fair and you guys don't listen. You guys just let it happen and oh, they're just talking. They're just telling us things that you guys don't even pay attention to. I say I agree with Mr. Pels and Mr. Pels works hard and he deserves a recognition. It's not fair that you guys kind of ignore him. He is very important and I think you guys should recognize that. He gave up a lot to be here. And I think you guys should just notice that. Thank you. The next six speakers are Emmanuel Silva, Omar Dienges, Laura Asaro, I believe Mayra Mendoza, Sandy Petros, and Dr. Nancy Bilsich. Good evening, board. My name is Emmanuel Silva. I'm currently a senior at Watsonville High School. I come here to speak on the behalf of the renewal of the CRE contract. At Nick Literature Studies has taught me various things about my culture and community. This is my second year taking the, this course, and it has never taught me to foster hate towards another group of people. Rather, this class makes me feel seen for once in my education. It has taught me to fight against the prejudices that are taught, that, that are targeted to minority groups like me. To speak up against the biases and challenge them for change. 
to take on a leader role and make my impact within my community, like many of us are here to do. I speak here urging you trustees to take the students and community into account and give us what we have been so long fighting for. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Dr. Contratus and the rest of the trustees. Um, my name is Laura Azaro, and I'm a reading intervention teacher at the elementary school level. And I'm just, I'm gonna tear up a little bit, but I'm really inspired by these students. I mean, they are so articulate and literate, and that's, I love, I live for that. I, I don't usually get to see the end result. I just, well, unless they come back and visit me, um, which they do. But I'm here because, um, I don't know, where do I start? I do, I, I was a third grade teacher and a fourth grade teacher, and so I'm very familiar with teaching foundational skills in reading and writing. And my concern is, I know we always have the budget looming over us, but um, we're still understaffed teachers, and some of the reading intervention teachers have been pulled to go teach. And um, at least at, at Hyde, where I work, our, th the students, because of the influx of money that we got after COVID, really helped us get instructional assistance and hire the intervention teachers. And all of our students, in first through fifth, are reading. They're reading. Now, I am seeing the after effects of COVID with my fourth and fifth graders the last two, three years of needing the intervention. And because of the SIPS program and other programs that we're using and our reading our literacy um, directors, we've been able to move them in a positive direction. Um, but now that we have all day kindergarten, which is great, I'm not faulting any of that, we've had to pull our IAs that were part of our site plan over to kindergarten. Now we have no support in those classes for foundational reading. And I'm just hoping that that can be addressed through the board for, to try to find funding so that they end up like this. Thank you. First of all, I want to honor all the students that are here and all the teachers that are here fighting for ethnic studies. Uh, as a student of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District who, for, who fought for Chicano studies in the 90s and faced a lot of discrimination and racism at Aptos High School, as the Elevate Youth Coordinator for Barrios Unidos where I mentor students from our school district, Pajaro Valley High, Watsonville High, EA Hall, Rolling Hills, and many other schools. I have heard the concerns and the frustrations for the renewal of the CRE contract for ethnic studies. I am speaking for all the students today, and their message to you is enough is enough. Ya yeah, basta. We demand you stop ignoring the students and community. The decision to not renew the CRE contract is a blank disregard for the voices of those who have advocated for this program, this contract. Students, educators, and community members have a attended meetings after meetings passionately and expressing the importance of this contract, yet their voices have been met with silence and total disrespect. It is unacceptable. Enough is enough. Ya basta. It is time for you to do your job and to put politics aside and our students deserve an education that reflects their diverse backgrounds. The CRE contract creates understanding, respect, academic excellence, and student empowerment, which is the most important gift we can give our youth. This building that we are standing in right now screams and yells ethnic studies all around it with the murals that are, are, are on the sides, all done by a by a local artist, Juan Fuentes, who is a student and ethnic studies activist. Yet we have to come here and fight for ethnic studies and the contract. How crazy is that? Listen to the community and to the students. And one last thing I want to say is you can't achieve a dream if you don't support your students. You can't achieve your dream if you don't support ethnic studies.
Good evening, I'm Sandy Petros, um, special education teacher over at PV High School. I just wanted to come here tonight um, and talk during this um, session um, to acknowledge Superintendent Contreras and the board for your commitment to support our school, PVI, specifically to our students and our staff. Your dedication to make our school a better place for all is noticed and it's appreciated. Um, something that I did want to bring up though, um, that broke my heart a little bit, a lot actually, was the day before we had students come, we had a valued um, teacher be transferred to another school. So that made for us to have to readjust schedules and place students um, elsewhere. So that was challenging. Um, we, are, we are progressing on that and um, you know, making it work, right? So that's what we do. But I did want to bring that up. That was, that was pretty tough to swallow um, the day before. Um, Trustee Scow, thank you for visiting our campuses often, often to hear our voices and um, to attend our student events. It's, it's, it goes noticed as well, okay? So thank you for that um, and thank you for your time. Good evening, board. I just wanted to talk to you about Amy Gutierrez, but you covered it. All of you have covered it. And I think she should be commended and hopefully we'll hear more later. But she got right here to my heart. She was in with those students and she did all she could for them. And we are so lucky to have someone of that caliber, a bus driver, to do such an excellent job. And I heard she's only been a bus driver for about a year, so think about that. Georgia, your comments were outstanding. And I appreciate all of you in acknowledging her. Thank you. So the last three that I have right here are Marilyn Garrett, Joanne Ling Zwistler, and Don Brown. Marilyn Garrett, retired teacher from this district. I taught for 30 years. I want to recommend this book and that the author be invited to speak to any parent group or this board. The unfortunate truth about vaccines, exposing the vaccine orthodoxy by Leon Canarod, who was a school psychologist for 35 years and started noticing in the 1990s autism cases and started investigating the links to vaccines. I'll just excerpt the section summary and recommendations. He is the local author. The media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent because they control the minds of the masses. Quote from Malcolm X, highlighting major points. Since grade school, we have been taught to believe that vaccines have been responsible for saving millions of lives from deadly infectious diseases. This widely accepted belief is the reason that most people don't question the science behind vaccines today. Stories of the eradication of diseases like smallpox and polio are so ingrained in our thinking that it's hard to imagine it not being so. An accurate reading of history, however, shows that diseases have declined steadily as living conditions in the world have improved. Leon Canarot, The Unfortunate Truth About Vaccines, second edition. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi, Dr. Contreras, board and um, cabinet members. I'm Joan Ling Swizzler. I'm a K-8 teacher at the Pacific Coast Charter School, and I'm standing here with my colleague from high school. We had a really difficult year last year. We went through eight different interim principals who all tried their best to help a school that who we found out uh, midway through the, actually at the end of the year that our charter may not be renewed due to some new laws that we did not know about that nobody in the district, um, including our assistant superintendent who was supposed to be our principal's boss, um, had known about that. And so we were a mess. And so we were very glad to have a new principal this year. Um, but uh, several days before school started, we were told uh, right before the parents of the school were told that our uh, principal was also going to be helming Pajaro Middle at the new school site. And it was just like a slap in the face. We have felt neglected by the district for many years. Our former principal had to retire due to medical conditions. He was constantly pulled away from our site for, uh, for safety training, to help at other schools. And as a result, it was very hard for him to uh, keep up with charter law and um, support us, which he did his best to do. Um, so the recent hiring of a co-principal has been very helpful, but I noticed this morning that there is still not a post on EdJoin for Pajaro Middle School principal position. And um, we cannot go on like this. We're hearing rumors that our, store, our school may close. Uh, I do appreciate hearing back from several board members that I wrote to express my concerns. Um, uh, we really don't want to close. We serve a lot of very vulnerable students who have not succeeded at their neighborhood schools. We may be a small school, but we are part of PVUSD. We're a dependent charter, and uh, we hope that you support us. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Contreras, members of, the, members of the board, members of the community. Uh, it's been quite an inspiring evening hearing some of the speeches tonight, and I, I would encourage you to uh, acknowledge the students and, and give them some uh, feedback on, on what they've been telling you. I think they might deserve that. Uh, I'd also like to um, comment on what Sandy Petros, one of my colleagues, had to say. I'm a teacher at PV High, by the way. Um, the teacher that was let go right the day before school started was a SPED teacher, and that really rocked that program. And, and those students deserve better, and those teachers, they, they work hard, and, and they're working a lot harder now because of that. And, and I would encourage you to be more thoughtful about acting in a proactive way before waiting to the last minute to do something like that. Dr. Contreras, it's been a great start to our school year besides that, and I'd like to thank you for that. I know that uh, you maybe had a lot to do with facilitating Mr. Wilson becoming our new principal, and he has just provided the kind of leadership that, that we needed at our school. It's calm, and we're not fearful anymore, and uh, we're building our community up again. So we really appreciate Mr. Wilson as our principal. Uh, Adam, I'd like to appreciate you for all the advocacy you've done at our site, too. I know you've been out at our site a number of times. You've really supported our music program, and you've helping support our environmental mission that we have at PVHS, so I really appreciate you for that. Um, a couple of comments. I ride my bike to school every day, and when you're talking about Measure M, I'd really like you to look at the bike lane across uh, the bridge going to the school. Uh, that, that last four or five blocks, you know, once I get onto Harkinslew Road is very dangerous, and I feel like I'm taking my life, you know, in hand every time I ride there. But, how are we going to reduce the traffic problem if we can't get more people walking and riding their bikes to school? So I'd like you to look at that with Measure M. I'd also like to remind you that Watsonville High and Aptos High got a lot of love from that first bond measure that was passed. And there was a lot of money that was supposed to come to PVHS. We were supposed to get a, a new theater and a swimming pool. We still haven't gotten those. So I'd like to encourage you to work on advocating for, for those things being built too. Thank you for your time. Thank you, um, and that will conclude, conclude public comment for this evening. We will now move to item 8.1, the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers, PVFT. Do we have anyone here representing PVFT? Yep. 
So I have more than five minutes worth of comments and the undemocratic garbage that I just saw of capping the public comments to 30 minutes, the, your audacity just blows my mind. From people who are our supervisor to our students, sorry, we only have 30 minutes to hear from you, but we're gonna spend how much time talking about a damn Red Apple Award or hearing what you had for lunch? You have plenty of time to make your comments, but you silence the students, the supervisor, the audacity, and I do not wanna see it happen again. I am here on behalf of the PVFT, and I could feel Nellie's spirit coursing through my veins today, um, and I'll start trying to get through this because I actually wanted to um, spend a little bit of my beginning comments here just to acknowledge Nellie. Uh, most of you see Nellie as the public face of the PVFT, and you see how hard she works on behalf of our members and students. But I've had the pleasure of working alongside Nellie in our office now, and I want to take a second to say that the work that you see is only the tip of the iceberg. I've never encountered anyone with the spirit, fight, and determination that Nellie demonstrates on a day in and day out basis. There's so much that goes on in these positions that the public is not always privy to. We've had fires, floods, pandemic. We're like a plague of locusts away from just getting biblical in here. So I just want to take my hat off literally to Nelly. Um, and I also want to say that the PVFT would like to extend their thanks to the candidates who participated in the COPE Forum yesterday. Um, it's really exciting to get to see that participation and democracy. I do want to state for the folks who learned that they did not earn an endorsement, it's because the public image that you have cultivated does not align with the experiences expressed by our our members. I take particular exception when a board member tries to then get into this revisionist history on the CRE contract claiming that it's financial when it's not. That is bull. I would rather you stand on business than make up lies. <sighs> All right. So speaking about finances, did anyone on this board or cabinet stop and consider the optics of having a special board meeting at the Seascape Resort? How much was that room? Was your dinner catered? How undemocratic can you get than having a special board meeting about the budget that is not streamed, not recorded, and held at an exclusive and expensive resort? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So that is just, I urge you to do better and to do that meeting again in public so that the public who you're ignoring gets to see this manufactured budget crisis. <sighs> so... Again, like I said, I've got so much to get through, and I'm not going to get through it all. But the district really does need to re-examine the practices of relying on combo classes as well. Because we keep hearing that we're declining enrollment, budget crisis, but we don't have the staff to support our students. So we're putting together classes like a TKK SDC autism combo. Let's just throw some ELDs. Like, what else can we add into a class like that? And we wonder why we don't have a teacher. Hmm, wonder why. But we've got a budget crisis. We've got to start looking at it. We've got to start making cuts. And we all know that you're really looking at reducing Reducing your workforce and it is wrong. <sighs> also, when we have these combo classes, who gets pulled to support those classes? Hmm, our intervention teachers. Our intervention teachers are supposed to be part of the MTSS process and the whatever acronym you want to throw at us. Our intervention teachers are supposed to be doing the job of an intervention teacher, not being just, ah, well, you're just a bonus teacher. We'll just throw you in this class because we can't staff adequately because we don't pay enough. Um, I appreciate, or we appreciate the opportunity to negotiate an MOU on the pay rate for the PVFT members who work in ELOP. We also want to see the district hold themselves accountable to the arguments and the rationale that were made during these negotiations. The district's manufactured budget crisis cannot continue to land solely at the feet of teachers and your labor as a whole. In the hiring process now for the ELOP program for our members, what we are seeing is it is the Mean Girls Club, where the administrators get to pick their favorites and sorry if you're not on the administrators good graces you don't get a work ELOP because it is a mean girls club I'm looking at you rolling hills so let's go let's figure this out and if you're gonna make these arguments then show us where the proof is in the pudding whatever you want to say I'm trying to spare you from my judge Judy quotes because God I love judge Judy <laughs> But I want to speak to the unsafe and understaffed SPED programs, too. Like, I've been hearing so much this week. The get yourself out to Calabasas, please. Because the teachers are, feel unsafe, the students feel unsafe, and we really need to staff these programs adequately. We can't be robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like, when we have an IA who's out on leave, 
they need to have a replacement. It can't just be, let's scramble and sorry, this one teacher and this one aide, you're going to have to be responsible for 10 students with an IEP. And if one elopes that way, one elopes that way, you're going to have to figure out which one to go save. So, um, yep, this year's already been action packed. And I think we're going to have to buckle up because it's going to be a long ride unless you can finally show that you support your labor. Thank you. 8.2, California School Employees Association. Do we have anyone here from CSCA? Seeing none, we will now, oh, I'm so sorry. Actually, uh, we do have one public speaker on 8.1, pardon me. Chris Webb. Okay, I would like to thank PVFT for the forum that they held. Um, I would like to thank all the attendees who went. Um, I feel like that does strengthen our democracy, and I also want to acknowledge that not all unions do that. Um, also, I want to wish con my condol or condolences for Trustee Soto and his family. Um, also, I would say that these type of um, events help me in the classroom, help me to connect uh, like democratic principles and principles of government in a way that students can get and it's um, tangible for them. So I really appreciate that. I also want to thank um, PBFT for working out the ELOP MOU. Um, I, I have, since we, I have a great principal over at um, Watsonville High and like he pulled a, he pulled a field like a rabbit out of a hat and like I, now we've been talking about um, doing rugby and if we hadn't um, worked out that, that deal, if it was for supplemental rate, even despite my love of the game and then the students on principle, I would have had to I would have to, to hold back. So I, I want to thank PVFT for, for their work there. And then also I want to thank PVFT for fighting for the teachers on the PN day um, thing. I, I think it's, that's one area where I'm, I'm a little disappointed um, with the new leadership just because I thought that was like a really easy one. And the PVFT flyer I got for the, for the start of the month, it was like November, August 12th or something, said that was still going. And the email I got from the district came like a few weeks later. I, and you were here since May. So to me, that was like a really easy one. Like, let's not screw the teachers. And also like, we're like a, that was like a year ago. Cause that was on Labor Day. That was like very insulting that that was on Labor Day. Also, it, I really was bothered by it because when I take PN days as I'm taking on Friday, most of the time it's for childcare. And I came through for the district when COVID came and you asked teachers to work in person, I came. And then there was a time I had to bring my kid and it was okay for me to bring my kid for you guys. But when I've needed help with my kid, you guys didn't really uh, meet me. So um, I hope we can do better on the whole child, whole community thing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll recheck in with 8.2 CSEA, California School Employees Association. Do we have anyone here? Seeing none, I will move us to 8.3, Communication Workers of America, CWA, our substitute teachers. Do we have anyone here to speak this evening? Seeing none, I will move us to 8.4, Pajaro Valley Association of Man Managers, Pavam. Do we have anyone here? Thank you. Good evening, President Acosta, Superintendent Dr. Contreras, members of the board and cabinet. I'm Peggy P, Executive Director for Teaching and Learning. Happy New Year, PVUSD. The Pajaro Valley Association of Managers is excited to kick off this school year and support our awesome attendance campaign. You cannot achieve your dreams if you don't show up to chase them. We're in it to win it with all of you. It's been a great start to the year with our dedicated administrative team supporting students, staff, and families. Back to school nights are happening. I was just at Aptos Highs and throughout the district going on just about nightly at this point in time. And we are so happy to be partners with our families and our, between our administration, our staff, and our families. It's truly a partnership that keeps our district moving towards our goals. Finally, we want to offer congratulations and gratitude to all of tonight's Red Apple Award winners and a big Pavam shout out to the administrative winners, Christina Cota and Palmira Gallo. And we're just so proud of them. So thank you very much. Thank you. I will now move us to item nine, our consent agenda. These are our consent items or routine items that come before the board. Do we have any public speakers to the consent agenda? Yes, we do. We have two. The first one being Pam Sexton, I believe it just says nine. 
And, and then after her is Marilyn Garrett, who wanted to speak on 9.16. Um, give me a couple seconds here. Um, I'm an adult ed teacher, and I'm. I just wanted to. I saw that the pens, um, the preschool, um, nursery school um, programs are on the consent agenda, and a lot of people think that adult education. It, they just think of our ESL and high school diploma, but we also have pens, and as a a parent also whose kids went through um, preschool co-op, just to, to speak to how important it is. Um, some of our pens now are in 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, and um, it's, it's just a really important part of our, our school district. Um, these schools are also, also self-funded. They're not drawing funds from our district. And they're really doing important work with, with parents and, and teaching kids. Um, I also want to, in my short time, just yeah, let you know that I'm, I love being back at teaching. I teach in the ESL program. I, um, last year, we had a situation where it was discovered that there were administrative mistakes with regard to where people were placed on schedules. And an audit was done by HR, and the problem was found to be widespread in adult ed. And teachers were compensated. Um, they were given exactly the money that was taken out. But this was over years, over years of being at the wrong pay schedule for some of the teachers. And, and there was no interest paid, um, it was just, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. Here's the money we took from you. And um, it, last year, it was there was talk before the HR changes about something being done about that, but then there were changes in, ad, in administrative positions and nothing. We haven't heard anything yet, so we'd love to hear if something will happen with that. So this item refers in part to workshops at the Family Engagement and Wellness Center. Wellness centers that I'm somewhat familiar with often have to do with telling parents, get, get your kids vaccinated. That'll keep them well. Uh, what I've been reading, that's not the case, and I want to give you copies and read a little bit of this. Vaccination, the most important decision parents will ever make. And I want to tell you, I got aware of this when my daughter in 1969 got horribly ill from the DPT shot. And uh, someone recommended homeopathy. I took her to a homeopathic doctor, her growing up years, no more vaccinations, no more antibiotics. She did fine. She graduated from Aptos High in um, 1985, and I signed the form that said I didn't want her vaccinated. There was no law that informed, uh, mandated this toxicity. So um, just this is myths and truths about vaccination from Weston A. Price Foundation. Just one, um, vaccinations give, uh, oh, this one. It was vaccinations that stopped the deadly plague of polio. Truth, polio can be triggered by nervous system poisoning from teething powers containing mercury, now banned, and pesticides that, like lead, arsenic, and DDT. Polio declined in the United States when DDT was outlawed. I was part of a lawsuit to do that. Anyway, I will leave you with this. We want real wellness and real health without poisons being injected.
Thank you. Are there any items that the board wishes to defer? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to quickly bring up uh, 9.27. So would you like to defer? Yes, if we can, please. Okay. Is there anything else? For those of us that don't have an agenda. Seeing none, can I have a motion to the uh, approve the consent agenda with deferring item 9.27? I'll make a motion. I have a first. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Tr Trustee Scout, and thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. So I have a first and a second. I will now call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? I'll that abstain. Oh, I'm sorry. My employer's on the list of the MOU, so I'll abstain. Thank you. Okay. Did you want to just defer that one or no? Okay. So then that motion will carry 5011. And now we will move on to deferred item 9.27 to approve the donation of a Japanese cherry blossom tree to plant on the Wattsville High School campus in memory of the Honorable Willie Yahiro. Uh, I just wanted to pull this item to talk about a little bit. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Rob Mayada for making this donation. And I also want to speak, um, you know, Mr. Yahiro, he held this seat for 30 years and uh, I just never had a chance to speak um, uh, positive, to say my words. Uh, like I said, for 30 years, he held this seat. He was a coach, a community leader, a businessman. Um, still to this day, he's you know, very influential, uh, belongs to the Watsonville High School Foundation. And, and importantly, he was a wildcat, so I just wanted to finally speak and, and say thank you, Mr. Hero. Um, thank you. So, yeah. thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Any other comments from anyone else, Trustee DeSerpa? I'll just second Danny's um, comments about Willie. He was a dear friend to not only me, to many people, but to mostly the students and staff and teachers here in our district, and we miss him greatly. Thank you. Yes, and I will echo the sentiment. Um, since I was elected and served with Mr. Yohiro, he was always a very respectful colleague on this board. So we thank him for his years of dedication and service to Pajaro Valley Unified School District's Board of Education and to the PVUSD community. So with that, do I have a motion to approve uh, item, consent agenda item 9.27? Uh, I'd like to make the motion to support agenda item 9.27. I have a first. Do I have a second? Second. I have a first from Trustee Dodge Jr. Thank you. A second from Trustee DeSerpa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 601. Now moving to item 11.1, .1, resolution number 24-25-02, designating September 2024 as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And this report will be presented our Director, Executive Director of Student Services, Dr. Ivan Alcaraz. Good you. evening, Welcome. President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Heather Contreras. I'm Dr. Ivan Alcaraz, the Executive Director of Student Support Services for our district. And in front of you, I have a resolution designating September as the National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, whereas each year, more than 15,500 children under the age of 19 in the United States are diagnosed with cancer. Whereas each year, more than 1,700 children in the US lose their lives to cancer. Whereas childhood cancer is the leading cause of death from disease and the second leading cause of death overall for children in the U.S. Whereas the five-year survival rate for children with cancer in the United States has increased from 58% in the mid-70s to 85% in 2024, representing a significant improvement from previous decades. Whereas approximately two-thirds of children in the U.S. who survive cancer will develop at least one chronic health condition, and many survivors will face a late effect from treatment that can be severe or life-threatening. And whereas childhood cancer occurs regularly and randomly and spares no racial or ethnic group, social economic class, or geographic region. Now, therefore, be resolved that the governing board of the Bahar Valley Unified School District designate September as the National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and re um, 
recognized as the month with appropriate programs and activities with the goal of increasing public knowledge of the risk of cancer and encourages survivors of childhood cancer to continue to receive ongoing monitoring and physical and psychological care throughout the, uh, their adult lives and recognizes that human toll of cancer and pledges to make the prevention of and cure for cancer a public health priority and remains that the people of the Potter Valley Five UNESCO District of the bravery of the children who are diagnosed with cancer and commends and honors the courage of such children. I respectfully ask that you approve this resolution. And I do want to recognize that this resolution was not done in isolation. It was a collaborative effort. And so we want to appreciate and recognize those that help contribute to the development of this resolution. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. We have four. We have Sandy Petros, Heidi Boynton, Heidi, Marilyn Garrett, and Don Brown. Hello again. Um, thank you, Superintendent Contreras for bringing this to the board. Thank you, Superintendent Contreras and the board for considering this resolution. I'm already tearing up, but it'll be okay. I am grateful to you guys, I really am. There has been some progress over the years for cures, but there's still more research to be done to remove this devastating disease from children and adults. To have a child diagnosed with cancer is harsh enough for the child, parent, and family, but also going through treatment is unimaginable. This, as you can tell, is near to my heart. Okay. Um, some of my colleagues know that um, I lost my daughter, Cassandra, to cancer, and my great niece, Elise, who is now five years old and in kindergartner, is a survivor. We continue to hope for a cure and know that bringing awareness to childhood cancer is one way to support this. Children who survive this disease have lifelong health effects. Thank you for showing that our PVUSD community stands in unison to end this deadly disease to our most important stakeholders, our students. This will impact so many of our families in such a positive way. Knowledge is power. So with this resolution, I'm hoping we can build more awareness with knowledge to our staff, students, families, and community to create environmental, psychological, and physical shifts that lend the power to lower the current rate of pediatric cancers. I kindly ask that you sign the, re the resolution. Hello, Dr. Contreras and trustees. Um, my name is Heidi Boynton, and I'm the executive director of Jacobs Heart Children's Cancer Support Services, based just down the street on Auto Center Drive. Every year, we serve almost 400 families living in Santa Cruz County, Monterey County, San Benito, and South Santa Clara County. In PVUSD alone, we have 200 students who are affected by pediatric cancer. They have either been diagnosed themselves and are in survivorship, or they have lost a sibling to cancer or are a sibling of a child who has gone through treatment. We are so excited and grateful for the work that we were able to do last spring with Heather Gorman and the team learning about the long-term implications of a pediatric cancer diagnosis. It does not end when treatment ends and it does not end when a child dies. Pediatric cancer affects a family for the rest of their lives. It disrupts education, it disrupts their social connections, and it has a long-lasting effect on their lives and the whole family. I'm grateful that Jacob's Heart can be here to support those families, and I look forward to more and more collaboration with the district to help demystify what it means to have a family whose child has cancer, to help that, ca that family feel bold and brave, to stand in their journey and speak about their journey and not fear being isolated by friends and community members because of that diagnosis. I urge you with all of my heart to consider this resolution. It will help our community be strengthened in the knowledge 
that cancer is real, it affects everybody, and it has deep and lasting effects. So thank you very much. There can't be anything much sadder than childhood cancer. I'd like to see causes of cancer awareness month. What is causing all these cancers? When I was young, it was extremely rare to hear of children who had cancer. I'm 82 now. Something, combination of uh, toxins in the environment. I have an essential tremor. My healthcare provider thinks it's from working by fields of pesticides here by a messy school. And we know many pesticides are carcinogenic. It says it right on the label. And I remember looking in the Agricultural Commissioner's Office of what they were spraying near the schools, list of carcinogenic pesticides. So if we could eliminate toxins like pesticides, radiation, nuclear radiation, pharmaceutical drugs taken off the market because they cause cancer, I'll leave you with this fact sheet danger radiation about using a cell phone or digital cordless phone for two minutes disrupts the blood brain barrier. It's linked to cancer. People who have women who have cell phones in their bras developing breast cancer exactly where the cell phone is. I met a man who told me, oh, I know how dangerous it is. He had to have his left testicle removed because he kept his cell phone in his left pocket and the radiation gave him cancer. This should be removed from the schools, the radiation emitting towers, and the cell phones. Thank you. Hi, I'm back again. Um, I was reminded by, by Sandy, one of my colleagues, uh, of a student I, I had the fortune of teaching. Um, I taught at EA Hall for 23 years, and she came into my class as a sixth grader, a uh, sixth grader who was suffering with cancer. She had a kerchief that she wore over her head, and it wasn't very often that she could come to school, but being at school was like, the best day for her, you know, even though she was dying or trying to get over her cancer, you know, doing her schoolwork and being the best student she could be was like what drove her. Seventh grade came, she did okay. Eighth grade, her leukemia came back. Uh, we put out a call in the community for uh, bone donors to donate bone marrow so that she could uh, perhaps uh, survive her cancer. There was a man who tested to be the right donor, but when he found out what the procedure entailed, he chose not to, to want to go through with it. They went with the second best option, her mom, and unfortunately, second best wasn't good enough for, for this young lady. Uh, bringing awareness to all of our students and to our community about this disease and supporting those students as best we can, I, I think is a really good thing to do. And I'd really encourage you to, to adopt this resolution and, and support our students who are suffering from this disease and, and really could use a little bit more love. Thank you much. Thank you. I'll bring this back to the board for questions, comments, and or discussion. Oh. Trustee Flores, I just want to thank you for bringing this um, before us today. Um, wholeheartedly support this awareness. And I also want to just um, encourage, you know, those who can attend Relay for Life is coming up in Salinas. We used to have our very own here you know, at Watsonville High School, and Barbie Gomez is determined to bring it back next year. I've heard. And so, yeah, we are, she's already started her committee, so anyone interested, reach out. But it's, it's, it's amazing. I got to witness my own little cousins, you know, walk that survivor lap. And so it's a really um, 
amazing opportunity for people to get out there and be proud of their um, awesomeness, you know, at, the, at being able to serve, and also for family members to be able to go and um, honor those who, who were able to survive. So um, thank you for bringing this to, before us tonight. It sounds like you wanted to make a motion with those comments. Yes, I would like to make a motion to approve. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Bolano Scow. Yes, thank you for bringing this resolution. Thank you for everybody who uh, fought to bring this to our district, to our superintendent for, for bringing this forward tonight, to Ms. Petros, to the PV crew, and to everybody who, all the names here, a lot of prominent teachers in our, in our district are behind this. And it's heartbreaking, uh, but we gotta talk about it. And we have to acknowledge it. And we also have to recognize that yes, there are a lot of toxic pesticides in the Pajaro Valley. And that's why many teachers going back 25 years have led a fight to, to get more fields to go organic, starting back with a MESD. It was one of the reasons why Lakeside Organics went organic. Dick Pichot's kids were in schools that were being sprayed. And he led an organic conversion 20 years ago and is, of course, a very successful business person. He rotates some of his fields with Driscoll's. We are asked Driscoll's. We are asking Driscoll's to go organic, more organic around our schools, right behind McQuitty, behind Amesti, behind many of our schools, they are considering it. If anybody can afford to do it quickly, it's that company. Somebody made a suggestion that they should give money for our fields, for our sports fields. Driscoll's does give money to our district for our sports fields. We are thankful for that. We, they give to a lot of nonprofits. We are thankful for that. We would be even more thankful if they stopped using toxic pesticides right by our neighborhoods, right by our schools, they can do it. They're already about 20% organic. We are asking them kindly, respectfully, to make those transitions now. Thank you, everybody, for making this happen, and we'll continue to work on this. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scout. Trustee Dr. Holm. My daughter lost her best friend uh, at eight years old um, after a four or five year long battle with leukemia. And Just knowing the pain of the peripheral effect of that. You know, I, like I was walking the other day through our neighborhood and it's like, my daughter's friend would be 22 now. You know, they didn't get to graduate together. You know, these are losses to our community and they are losses that are felt as long as our, our loved one's memories are around. Um, and I think there are definitely conversations to be had about looking at our environmental factors um, and honoring the people who we have lost and honoring the people who struggle and win. Mm -hmm. um, so I, did you already second? I forgot to uh, so I'd like to second this motion. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Any other comments? Trustee DeSerpa. A few years back, some members of this board and others who are no longer on the board voted to ban Roundup from our campuses um, in a show of uh, solidarity to try to keep toxic chemicals away from our students. We knew that was gonna be uh, difficult because we don't really have the staff or the grounds crew to keep our schools looking tip top. So I, um, I say this to, to just um, remind people and parents and people that see our schools, it, the reason sometimes they look a little bedraggled is because we're not using toxic chemicals anymore to uh, do weed control. Um, for many years, I have done supervision for Jacob's Heart for their interns, their social work interns. Um, I've done that um, as a volunteer and I haven't done it recently, but um, thank you for being here tonight to support this resolution. And, um, and I think that's all I'll say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Anyone else? Trustee Dodge, Jr. Um, I'd also, too, like to speak, you know, in support of this recognition. Um, I, I wore this shirt today, the Jerry Loyola Foundation. Uh, Mr. Loyola was a, a, a teacher at Watson High a couple of years ago. I don't say a couple, many years ago. 
And um, my brother went to high school with his son, uh, Jerry Jr., who passed away from cancer. So every year, you know, people make donations. Um, people, they have a golf tournament, I believe it's, I always forget the name of the golf course. And so, the Spring Hills Golf Course. And so every year they come together to raise money in honor of Mr. Loyola's son. And it, 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 when people have time to kind of look into the, the Jerry Loyola Foundation, it shows that they raise money um, to also give back. They work with oncologists. Um, they donate money to people who have cancer. So if you know, they have a chance to look into that, um, you know, there's people out here in this community that are raising money for people that have cancer. And, and, and cancer, you know, black, white, it doesn't discriminate. And so we always have to remember that um, we always have to support each other and support our community um, because, you know, it, it, cancer, it, it's tough. You know, I, I recently had to help out a fundraiser for a six-year-old uh, last month who has cancer and, and uh, his parents needed help. And so we need to find ways to support each other, support our community, support our people. And as Trustee Flores was saying, um, hopefully we bring the Relay for Life back. I remember... The first year that I was here, I, I remember how inspirational it was. You know, people again from all walks of life, uh, classified workers, teachers, just the all, the way we all came together. You know, as 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 Watsonville people, Pajaro Valley people, um, some of you know people donated, but if people didn't have money to donate, we walked or we cooked food, and I you know I remember you know walking at night in the track, and so hopefully, you know I'm also you know. Hopefully we can bring that back. You know, I'm willing to be part of that community and hopefully it's something we all can do next year. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. And I'd like to remind our new student trustee, you get the opportunity to speak while you're up here too if you want, no pressure. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, I, I'll say pretty much just echo what everyone has said and thank you so much for bringing this forward and thank you to those of you for coming this evening and speaking on this resolution. I do have a first and a second. Um, so with that, I will now call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 601. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now move us to item 11.2 the uh, board governance handbook. This report will be presented by myself, board president, trustee Acosta, and superintendent of PBUSD, PBUSD schools, Dr. Heather Contreras. So um, today I would like to present and ask the board of education for PBUSD, PBUSD schools to approve the newly developed board governance handbook. This handbook was developed over work from the summer of 2024 with superintendent of PBUSD schools, Dr. Contreras, along with a consulting firm and the PBUSD Board of Education trustees. In this handbook, we developed the vision and mission statement for PBUSD. We also established meeting norms, core values, and the outline of how we will conduct the business of the district. Each board meeting, we will review a different section of the handbook until we have reviewed the handbook in totality. For tonight's meeting, I would like to take the time to review the vision and mission, our core values, and the meeting norms. So we will start with PBUSD's um, vision statement, which says that at Pajaro Valley Unified School District, our vision is every student will graduate ready to share their unique skills and abilities and be a positive contributing member of their community and their world. PBUSD's mission statement, we are committed to cultivating a nurturing environment where every student thrives academically, socially, and emotionally, empowering them to flourish in a dynamic and evolving world. Our core, core values are as follows with their definitions. Excellence. We strive for the higher standards in all that we do, continuously seeking to improve and exceed expectations in our pursuit of knowledge, innovation, and quality education. Integrity. We uphold the principles of honesty, transparency, and ethical behavior, ensuring that our actions and decisions reflect our commitment to doing what is right. Resilience. We embrace challenges and adapt to change with strength and perseverance, learning from our experiences to emerge stronger and more capable. Empathy. 
We foster a culture of understanding and compassion, recognizing the diverse experiences and perspectives of our community and supporting each other with kindness and respect. Unity. We promote collaboration and teamwork, valuing the contributions of every individual and working together to achieve common goals and build a cohesive community. Grace. We conduct ourselves with dignity and poise, treating others with respect and maintaining composure in the face of adversity. Courage. We face challenges with bravery and determination, taking bold actions and making difficult decisions to advance our mission and goals. Faith, we believe in the potential of our students, faculty, and staff, trusting in their abilities and the collective strength of our community to achieve great goals. Our meeting norms are as follow. Be present, actively participate, listen with empathy, trust each other, step up and step back, suspend judgment, be respectful, and follow the Brown Act. I'll now turn this over to Dr. Contreras, uh, superintendent of PBUSD schools for anything she would like to add. I would just like to thank the Board of Education for participating, for giving up their Saturdays to conduct to conduct the board governance handbook. Um, I appreciate the vision that each of you had and the shared values that you input into um, designing this governance handbook. And I look forward to seeing how we are able to implement these things in the community and also building this within our students. So thank you for that. Um, and I look forward to when we take different pieces of this throughout the next few board meetings um, to review. Thank you, Dr. Contreras. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we have four. Dr. Parasa, Nat Lowe, Eli Davies, and Marilyn Garrett. Wow, I got to say that it's really interesting to see that you guys are really great at writing stuff, but definitely not good at living up to it. Um, I mean, look at, look, look at Ms. Uh, 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 President Acosta, not even bothering to look at us, just writing away. And, you know, for being an election year, I would think that you would be trying harder to get our votes. Um, I, I really don't understand how you think we would want to reelect you when you have done none of the things that are listed there. None of them. Um, you not only have not done any of those things, but when you were asked at a forum yesterday about how you would make the, the, the relationship between the board and the community better, it's like, you, you, it's like it went in one year, not the other. You are the one that, are, that is creating the animosity because you're not living to any of these things at all. So I don't even understand how you have the gall to go to these forums and say you're doing these things because you're not. It's clear by the people that come here and tell you this every meeting, you're consistently ignoring us. Thankfully, all the things you've tried have failed. We, we will continue to come and we will continue to tell you that these things that you claim you're going to do, you're not doing. Because none of us feel here that you have willingly engaged with us. You don't answer emails. You don't, you don't respond to voicemail, to voice messages. You don't, you don't listen. You, you claim that you listen, but you don't. You, maybe you're listening and it's going one year and not the other, but you're definitely doing nothing to let us know that you're listening. Not only that, you lied about CRE. You know how we know? Because we contacted Dr. Tintiango Cubales to see if what you claim was true about it causing to the, it doesn't. So I'm not sure where you got your facts. It might be good for you to, the next forum for you to say where you get your facts because Dr. Tintiango Cubales was like, that's not true. So not only do you not do that, you on top of it, you lie. No transparency whatsoever, which you claim to have. So I would like to see that transparency. I would like for you to live up to those things. Hi, my name is Nat, Area 7, and I want to talk about the conduct of the governing board. The members of this board keep saying that they want to support ethnic studies and that the problem is with CRE, even without any evidence. Okay, a year ago when you dropped the CRE contract, you, said, you all said that you would bring back the contract with another consultant. 
Trustee Acosta, you said that you did a Google search and you found many options. Then why has, have you all not found an alternative consultant over the past year? You had a grant that would cover the cost of the CRE contract and the district is now scrambling to try and spend that money on field trips and guest speakers before you lose it. The, you also had money from the state through AB 101 appropriations. You got $144,552 to be exact. Yet you haven't bothered to use that to support the development of the ethnic studies program, which students need to graduate. You keep saying that you support ethnic studies, but your actions show that you would rather lose grant money that your staff worked hard to get than fund the, the development of ethnic studies at PVUSD, whether with CRE or not. So how is this in our students' best interest and how are we supposed to trust you with more taxpayer dollars this November? Our students de deserve that funding, but they deserve better than trustees who lie to them and refuse to look at them and listen to them. And we are going to vote to, you know, we're going to work to vote you out and get trustees that actually live up to the standards that you've talked about. Hello board, Eli also, same area, seven. Um, so that's a nice, you know, idea, but we've seen over the course of the many months that we've come back here for the CRE contract. Um, and and it's, it's not like we're doing this for fun, right? Like we want our Wednesdays, we want you to do your job, right? But um, we just hope you have to keep coming back. You know, we have things on here like integrity, um, a, a couple of your lies just, you know, last night were already exposed. Uh, if you've listened to the folks at PVFT, uh, President Acosta, I don't know, it's, it's pretty clear you're not doing a good job and the people that you're supposed to be responsive to know that you're not doing a good job. So, um, you know, on top of what was said last meeting, checking in with the lawyer about how it's First Amendment rights violation to say that people cannot read other people's statements, which I saw you basically, a, a Georgia Acosta, kind of bully an adult woman who was trying to read a student's uh, statement. And that's hostile. That's not empathy, unity, integrity, et cetera, et cetera. So we have some people who want to replace you. And I think that they'll actually live up to this a little bit better. Um, but yeah, about the Seascape Resort and the, you know, it sounds really nice. You guys keep going on retreats. I think that's the second one I've heard of, but maybe you could put in the work in the way that Bobby was talking about putting in the work. So just a thought. First, I'd like to say that I have attended hundreds of city council, board of supervisors, school board meetings. The procedure is people get up and line up to speak. They don't sign a card. They don't have to sign a card prior to the item. This is another way you are censoring or limiting input from the public. By, your de by their deeds, you shall know them. Actions speak louder than words. We see your behavior and your insults to the students and rejecting their requests. This is just words. Something else that should be on there. You want the students to thrive and have skills that they can share in the community. We need a healthy learning and working environment with toxicity in the environment from all the wireless radiation, the pesticides in this area, people being injected with poisons, these so-called vaccines. By the way, turbo cancers are developing after the COVID shots. That's statistically true. So I'd like to see people line up who want to speak. You need to change your 
policy here, and I was looking for where is a copy of this book? I was looking out there, board governance handbook. Why didn't you have them available? I will bring this back to the board now for questions, comments, discussion. Any comments from the board? Yeah. Trustee Flores. I just want to thank um, all of my colleagues here for spending that time together, you know, to be able to um, really look at, you know, what our ultimate goal is, which is the stu our students, and really just bond together so that we can make these hard decisions, you know. Um, with a little, like, you know, more camaraderie on our board, which I really do appreciate. Um, from the time that I got on to almost two years ago to now, I, all I could say is I'm very, very proud of every single member on this board. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Anyone else? Trustee Dr. Holm. I think that the, the handbook speaks to the aspirational goals of this governing body. Um, I think that I'm glad that it's been available on the agenda for you know, the 72 hours that's, and that it's been publicly available. Um, and I move to approve. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Anyone else? Trustee DeSerpa. I'd like to second. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Anyone else? Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, thank you, Dr. Contreras. You know, when you came here, we all knew it was going to be tough. But speaking for me, and you know, a lot of my constituents, we believe in your vision. I stand with you. I believe in you, and a lot of us in my area do too. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Anyone else? All right. Um, I will also like to echo some of the sentiments already said um, by my colleagues. Um, I thank you all for your hard work over the summer and showing up and doing this. I appreciate the collaboration of this board to do this and how it was very student-centered and forward-focused thinking. And I appreciate all of you and your hard work and your dedication to this. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? That motion will carry 601. Thank you, you all. Now we will move to item 11. Point three, to approve the 2022-23 Measure L Bond Financial and Performance Audit Report. This report will be presented by our CBO, Ms. Jenny M. Welcome. Good evening, Board President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Heather Contreras. My name is Jenny M., the CBO, and I'm here to present our 2223 Measure L Bond Financial and Performance Audit. And I am very proud to say that um, due to the strong systems that we have in place here, we have no findings for the year 2223. And our independent auditors have determined that all expenditures were properly accounted for and spent on authorized uh, bond expenditures. Uh, we presented this to the Bond uh, Citizens Oversight Committee on July 16th, 2024 for their approval as well. And I just wanted to take this time to also say thank you and show appreciation to the Honorable Willie Yahiro, who is a member, a dedicated member of our Bond uh, COC for many years. So I ask to approve um, our performance audit. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? No, no we seeing, don't. So, okay, seeing none, I will bring this back to the board for questions, comments, and discussion. Any comments from the board? Yes, Trustee DeSerpa. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Kay Kim. So we've had a multiple year-over-year-over-year -over -year -over -year audits of the Measure L bond, and I, 
I can't remember any findings before. So I'm so this is great. There, there's no irregularities. The money's been spent as designed. Yes. And, yeah. So what's left in the fund? How much do we have left? We um, are close to closing out our books, and we are down to about 4% of Measure L remaining. So what does that mean in terms of dollars? So that is roughly around $6 million, okay. um, with um, about half of that um, at PV High School. In terms of? Remaining allocations from Measure L. So what will happen at PB High with half of that money, with $3 million? So there's a couple options. Um, so we can um, utilize that for um, any authorized uh, projects that are still on the list that the Citizens Oversight Committee and the school community had authorized. Uh, we're also seeing if that money can be used um, in conjunction with uh, Measure L, Measure M if that is passed in November. Okay, so we're sort of holding to see if we could combine that money with some of the money from Measure M. Yes. Great. And then the other $3 million, do we have that allocated to any projects? Um, yes, yeah, some of that is committed um, at projects that are currently ongoing or about to start in 24-25. So a lot of those um, dollars, there are little pockets of money left over at many of the sites. So um, some of the options would be um, going back to the Citizens Oversight Committee, um, proposing possibly new projects that would fit the smaller dollar amounts that are left over. Um, and then um, another option would be to see if we can roll that over and use in conjunction with Measure M as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Trustee Dr. Holm. Thank oh. you, Trustee DeSerpa, by the way. Thank you for the report. I'll just move to approve. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow. Anyone else for questions, comments, deliberation, or discussion? All right, I have a first and second. See none. I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right, that will carry 601. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move to item 12.1, our look, listen, and learn sessions feedback. This report will be presented by Superintendent of PBUS Schools, Dr. Heather Contreras. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so as many of you know, when I began my position on May 1st, I embarked on a look, listen, and learn journey to get to know every aspect of the district, to hear what's working and what needs attention. And so this report will be regarding what, my, what I found um, and the places I've been and what are the next steps. Let's start with the vision, although now we have a, uh, this is part of our new vision that was just approved at Pajaro Valley Unified School District. Our vision is every student will graduate ready to share their unique skills and abilities and be a positive contributing member of their community and their world. And our mission is that we are committed to cultivating a nurturing environment where every student thrives academically, socially and emotionally, empowering them to flourish in a dynamic and evolving world. So here's a chart of the different um, activities and places I went, activities I engaged in, places I went uh, in the first month that I was there and also continuing into the beginning of this school year as well as the summer. I started uh, my first week with district office tours. I went through every floor, every office, every uh, nook and cranny to meet people, to talk to them, uh, to ask the two basic questions, what's working and what needs attention. I met with PVFT, CSEA, CWA, and PAVAM asking the same questions. I held eight community meetings as well as surveyed our community. Uh, the survey responses, there were 1,500 of them. I met with Watsonville Fire. I went and attended um, and held principal meetings. I went to every single school site in our district, including our um, transportation site, nutrition services, maintenance and operations. I held student lunches at our high schools. 
Um, I met with student trustees and I created a new student advisory board to help give these inputs. I met with both the city and county leadership. Um, I had held department visits. I met with all of you multiple, multiple times. I, when, I appreciate your time with all of that. I've met with Watsonville PD, Aptos Sheriff, uh, Parks and Recreation. Uh, I held a counselor meeting and met with counselors in the district. I rode school buses. I visited sports foundations, Chamber of Commerce, um, held leadership meetings with, with our PV uh, USD leadership. I've met several times with the green team establishing goals on how to be a more sustainable um, a more sustainable district, and I attended many celebrations. The beauty of starting in May is there were many opportunities to celebrate students, graduations, the Sill of Biliteracy, Civic Engagement, and the Innovator of the Year Awards. So in, in total, I've had hundreds of contacts, thousands actually, with different people around the two core questions, what's working and what needs attention. Of the 1,530 inputs through our survey data, what we found was the things that were talked about multiple times by multiple shareholders in the district, um, that's how we developed the what's working. We heard that our dual language programs were a highlight, that our arts and music programs were something to be proud of, that the CTE expansion that's been happening across our district over the last several years was a highlight, uh, families and students both reported that they celebrated our athletic programs and that opportunities for family engagement uh, were, were good and frequent. We also heard that there was strong community around schools, and I think that even we see evidence of the community around schools here in this boardroom this evening. What is CTE stand for? You could go. That's our career and technical education programs. You could go to the next slide. <clears throat> Did you click it? There we go. Go one back, I think. Yeah, one more. Keep forward. No. Nope. <laughs> there you go. So our response is that we want to continue to build on what's working and develop those areas. So our dual language, we're looking at how can we continue to develop the program as well as professional development around the dual language programs. Our arts and music uh, has received the Proposition 28 program funding. Uh, so we're looking at that strategically on how do we use uh, that to build and grow on our arts and music programs. Uh, we continue to put more positions into place for Proposition 28. Our CTE expansion, when we heard that that was a, um, something to be proud of in our district, we added two more pathways this summer. Both of those pathways were added at Pajaro Valley High School, partly in response to what students were saying about needing more options at Pajaro Valley High School. Uh, our athletics, we are adding opportunities at our middle school as we move forward this year, and we're excited to be able to offer that into our middle school programming. And our parent engagement, we continue to look for how we can have two-way communication through meetings uh, that are offered, a different variety of meetings, trainings that we provide to parents, um, as well as just opportunity for parents to talk to us about what they see is happening in the district. Um, and then one of, the, um, night, one of the more celebrated things that's happening more, most recently in our schools is the Community Schools Grant that brought $32 million into our district. That was awarded just this May. Um, and we are busy looking at different actions um, at each of the school communities based on community input that will happen as part of our community school programming. We also had 1,500 um, inputs, a little bit more than that, around what needs attention. What are the things that our community thinks we need to look at and uh, provide a little more attention to and, and some of our focus on? Some of those included more specialty classes. Uh, someone asked me, well, what does that mean, more specialty classes? This is verbiage stated straight from the survey data, and we believe that means students are looking to have uh, greater opportunity for electives in the high school programming. 
Cell phones were something that were named multiple times and the comments attached to the cell phones was that they're distracting at schools and sometimes a safety, uh, a safety risk, so we'll be looking at that. Um, our facilities came up as an area needing attention as well as pedestrian safety. And we had our community ask for more green spaces as well as sustainability efforts in the district. So in looking at those uh, things that needed attention, we immediately said, well, what are some things that we can do quickly in response to what we're hearing? So like I mentioned earlier, we added two new CTE pathways over the summer at Pajaro Valley High School because that's where the asks were coming from with um, some new programming. For our cell phones, we have a pilot program at Aptos High School and Pajaro Valley High School. The students were even able to speak to that just last week when I met with them at lunch. Um, the pilot program entails just a more focused um, approach to not having cell phones available, especially during instructional time. And at Pajaro Valley High School, uh, they actually are using pouches in the classrooms to help students to stay off the cell phones and uh, be focused on their learning. And the students reported that at first they were a little bit upset about the cell phones that were happening. Um, but then as they adjusted to that, they actually were thankful for not having that as a distraction. For facilities, we have a measure M bond that was put onto the ballot as partly a response from the community of wanting um, facilities to be looked at and paid attention to. Uh, we did have the worry about pedestrian safety. We heard even that earlier tonight. Uh, so we've been partnering more closely with the city of Watsonville and the Northern County Safe Routes to School to closely examine some of those routes to see what we can do to make safer routes to schools. We have seven identified areas just in the last three months uh, where we would like to put flashing beacon lights in partnership with the city of Watsonville. Um, in the green spaces and sustainability efforts, we heard a, a big cry for um, opening up our facilities to the public. And so over the summer, we opened six campuses for community access um, and as a pilot to see how that would go mainly with an eye towards our maintenance and operations and uh, the draw on their uh, time in terms of upkeep. It's been very successful. We've had a couple of areas that, um, that may, were challenges, uh, but I think we've overcome them. Our green team has continued to meet and set some goals of becoming a green district. And we expanded our solar panel expansion um, over the summer uh, with some different projects, uh, one of them being at the district office. We have added electric buses and a food, food rescue implementation program. So next steps include working very closely with our Board of Education to align district strategic goals along with the local control accountability plan um, and looking at how we can blend those to continue to address the identified needs from the district. And the recommendation is to look at the district goal areas within the five main functions of a school district, which are academic achievement, professionally developing those in the system, of course, safety, being fiscally sound, and then being able to recruit, hire, train, and retain a high quality staff. Thank you, Dr. Contreras. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. Uh, I will call up six for right now. We have Nat Lowe. Eli Davies, Bobby Pels, Gabriel Barraza, Dr. Barraza, and Christine Hong. Oh, okay. So to make it seven, we have Omar Diegas. Hi, Nat Low, um, Area 7 again. Well, that sounds really great. I, I think it's just really hard to hear that you seem to have talked to everyone in the district except the people who have been coming to talk to you over and over and that over again. Um, you know, our group has been organizing for a year. We, we invited you to our freedom schools and you said you're going to come and you didn't. 
students today have literally come to you saying, you said you were looking, listening and learning, but we didn't feel heard. The students today came here and said this to you. So how can you say that you talked to everyone or you heard everyone? And how can you say that you know, you've been looking and listening and learning when you're ignoring, you've gone out to so many people, but these people are coming to you. These students are coming to you and they're coming to you on school nights. They're coming to you, you know, the student who came after practice who's been out since eight. And these are the voices you're ignoring. And it's just really hard to, to believe that, that you're really interested in, in listening to all students and all voices. And, you know, we're gonna have another Freedom School. Um, our group, Pahara Valley for Ethnic Studies and Justice, is gonna keep working here. And we invite you to come and speak to us too. Eli Davies, Area 7. I uh, definitely want to double what Nat has said. Um, I'm, I'm also disappointed in the res Dr. Contreras' response to the ongoing issue of the board's neglecting neglect regarding the CRE contract. Um, you said there would be a committee on ethnic studies, but that was all empty words when you flat out said CRE wasn't going to happen. You were so scared off by the racist anti-ethnic studies legislation that hadn't even passed, and in fact, Assembly Bill 2918 didn't pass. This is what grassroots organizers rooted in justice were able to accomplish. These are your constituents. The board played up your arrival as the solution to the issues within the board, but all I see is running the same party line, shutting down democracy, and sending the board on numerous retreats. So we're going to keep see speaking, and we're going to hope that you like look and listen and learn, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, hi, Bobby Pills, and um, I kind of said what I wanted to say already, so I'll just, I'll just say this. You know, I, I hope that when you're doing your look, listen, and learn that you, you put more weight and more value on what the students say, because those are the ones that we're serving with our, with our school district. Yeah. And I, I think that, um, in particular, these students that come every Wednesday night uh, should be held more important, because uh, how many young people do you know come out on a Wednesday night and wait around until 8.30 at night just because they have to say something in a school board meeting. I mean, it says a lot that these kids hung around and, and said their thing. And I have to say, I mean, Manny's one of my kids and he's the shyest kid, so it stunned me that he came up here and he spoke. But it mattered that much to him. And I tell my kids all the time, stay engaged, use your voice, speak up for what you want, and good things will happen. So what message are we sending that these kids do that very thing, those very values that you guys had up on the screen, these kids embody those values. And you can't even muster a good job, I'm proud of you, let alone bring back the CRE program. But even just responding and saying, that was impressive. You guys are impressive kids, I'm proud of you. I think they at least deserve that. So when you look, listen, and learn, I really, really hope that you are considering our kids and how hard it is for them to get up here and ask for those things that they want. Thank you. Week after week, week after week. After week. Yeah. I'm Gabriel Braza. I live in District 5, or Area 5. And, you know, I had hopes that uh, the Look, Listen, and Tour, Look, Listen, and Learn Tour would be successful, but I'm have to say that up to now I'm not impressed and I'm not impressed with any of you up here. Uh, you know, all of the words that you use in your handbook, all of the platitudes, all of the resolutions and the recognitions, they don't mean anything if you're not listening to the students, if you're not listening to the parents, if you're not listening to the community. You know, we do have wonderful community around our schools. That is despite the actions of the board, not because of the actions of the board. We have community. Watsonville is a strong community, but it is a community that has for decades, and I would say over a century, been silenced. Been silenced by racism. When Filipinos were prospering, white people came and destroyed their community. When Mexicans were no longer needed to pick the fruit, they were kicked out of this country. Many of them were born here and they were kicked out because they had Mexican surnames. 
Now, you guys have the opportunity to be leaders here. But so far, you have not done anything to show that you're leading this community. I hope that you guys can do better. You know, Dr. Contreras, you said that you were going to look, listen, and learn. And I just wonder, do we not count? Because we've been coming and talking to you. We met individually with you. Our kids met with you and told us, told you the same thing. And yet, you just didn't, I mean, did you not learn? That's what I'm wondering. Like, what, what are you trying to learn? Because we're trying to tell you here. Uh, I also wonder why you are creating a student advisory to hear student voices when you're ignoring the voices here. The students have come here and shared their voices. Why do you need a student advisory when you have students here who are already telling you and you're ignoring them? So I don't really understand that. This is a slap in the face to those kids who have come here and spend every Wednesday night vo voicing their opinion for you to not listen to them. Um, and also, uh, you know, I'm really glad that our group, I don't know if you're aware of this, but our group had a big influence on bringing down AB 2918. We sat and spoke with all the legislators and we brought it down. That's the power of the people. And I hope you know that that's the power that you're, that you, the, the people that you guys are dealing with. Um, I, know so, I know some people think that our group is really tiny, but it's a lot more, it's a lot bigger than you think. And we are gaining more people and each time we're becoming more powerful. And lastly, um, you sent out a, a statement informing parents that your goal was to increase attendance, student outcomes, graduation rates. You know what the research has shown that increases all these things? Liberated ethnic studies. We mentioned this to you all before, but this is a board who doesn't do research. This is a board who doesn't care what the research says. And just, you continue to, to work on the basis of, you know, insanity. You keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And I, it's frustrating as parents to know that we have stuff that proves what helps those things and you refuse to use them. That I don't understand. So I think that there is a learning opportunity here. And I want to say something. This past July, um, last month, our organization, Paro Valley for Ethnic Studies and Justice, we launched the Ethnic Studies Freedom School in Watsonville with a film screening and a discussion with an amazing teacher. I want to speak about her in just a moment. And almost 100 people turned out. OK, almost 100 people turned out. And um, so the teacher, uh, our focus for this year is on the Watsonville cannery strike. And we are meeting on a near monthly basis. And this is the subject of our ethnic studies education. And um, our first event featured Ms. Delia Mendez, who is a legendary Watsonville High teacher who supported her students when their mothers went on strike down at the canneries. And she incorporated the strike into her teaching. More than that, she blurred seamlessly the side of education with the community, the school with the street. She went down with her students to the picket line. The police arrested them all. Okay, so this is an incredibly dedicated teacher who understood that her job was to serve the community. She was ethnic studies in action. And so I want to say something about this because our Freedom School, we're doing it here because we have to create an alternative space in the community that you are not wise enough to actually nurture in the formal site of um, your educational spaces. And this has a parallel. Do you know where else this is happening? There's a, there are freedom schools happening right now in Florida with DeSantis. Okay, a, these are African American studies freedom schools. Do you really want this district to be a parallel to DeSantis's Florida? Not just that the community should come here, you should be coming 
to the community. Yes. Uh, I want to start off by reading this. It says, opportunity through diversity, unity through cooperation. And then I want to go into the, your values that you guys wrote. And this one stands out to me. And I want you guys to ask yourself at the end of the day if this is what you guys are really promoting or, or standing by. And it says, unity. We promote collaboration and teamwork, valuing the contributions of every individual and working together to achieve common goals and build a cohesive community. These students that are coming here, um, you know, me, me as a mentor, I, what I teach the students is to be peace warriors and to, and to, uh, to achieve things through talking, through uh, learning how to communicate. Um, and, and, I, and I teach them spiritual uh, uh, principles. You know, and um, I encourage you guys to 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 try it. You know, to look into some spiritual principles. Are you guys really here to empower the students? Are you guys really here to help them? You know, I see this sign. It says, "Achieve your dreams." So how are they going to achieve their dreams? How those how those students that want to become ethnic studies teachers? How are they going to achieve those dreams if you guys are not helping them achieve those dreams? You know. And, and Bobby, thank you for coming, and all the students that you guys got that came. I, I th and you know what, Daniel, thank you. Thank you for being part of this board. And like she said, don't be afraid to speak up. Speak up for the right, you know, speak up for all the students that can't show up here. Speak up for them. We got your back, you know. The, use that to your advantage to make changes. And I believe that you're going to be a, a good leader for them, for all the students that can't come here and show up. All right, I will bring this item back to the board for questions, comments, discussion, and I'll remind the board that this is a report and discussion item, not an action item. Any questions, comments, or discussion from the board? Trustee Flores. Um, I found those two slides interesting, the what is, what is working and what is not working. Um, so that's really exciting. I agree with, with both lists. Um, not to focus on the negative, but, you know, I... I the, that's the area where we, you know, need to work and improve. I, I was happy to hear about these these pouches in the classrooms for cell phones because I know my children have a hard time keeping their eyes off their phones. And you know, as a mom, I can only do so much. But I'm glad the teachers now have this tool to, you know, help them to fight this problem. Um, pedestrian safety again. We, you know, mentioned it earlier. So again, I want to just let parents know if you have a route that you feel can be safer, please let us know because we will advocate for you and get those those safe school routes. And then the green spaces, I was happy to hear. I was um, curious how our pilot program went. Um, growing up right next to EA Hall, that was my playground. And that was my, you know, where I went to go run the track when I just wanted to exercise. So seeing the fences come up were a little sad, you know, and um, not being able to, you know, head over to Minnie White to play on the playground. So I'm, I am excited that we are, that the district is open to opening up our campuses um, for our community. So yeah, seeing those five items, um, I think we, you know, if we can hit those five hard, then I think we, we're in a good spot. Um, I thank you for giving everyone the opportunity to be heard um, in our community meetings. And I just think, I think that this start was amazing and I can't wait to see what's, what's next. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Anyone else from the board? Yeah. Our student trustee, thank you. I just wanted to add to Trustee Flores' comments about um, the cell phone policy. I know for a majority of Aptos High teachers, they've been using the cell phone pouches to take attendance for students. Um, Otherwise, if students do not have their phones, they can directly contact their teacher about that. Um, as it was obviously previously stated, it's been difficult for students to adjust to, but I think ultimately it's going to be the path forward to developing that focus inside the classroom. And um, also adding to the Pajaro traffic um, situation during our superintendent um, inner high committee or core council committee, um, one of the students that was on the board that's representing Pajaro Valley had stated that um, parents have no choice but to park next to the slough, potentially putting students who bike and skateboard at, to school at risk. 
And currently, PV has no crossing board, so I think uh, crossing guard, I think as a board, we can work together to ensure that that will get taken care of this year. Thank you, student trustee Esquili, for your input. Trustee Bolano Scow. Thank you, student trustee, for those important comments, and that's the priority to make Pajaro Valley safer this year, and I know we're going to be working on that. Um, I agree on some of these things that we're hearing are what's working, arts and music and Prop 28, using that better. That's something we have had to fight for in the past, uh, to not just be using it to backfill existing programs, and I, and I know that Stephanie Monroe and our superintendent supporting uh, expanding these programs, and they are being expanded in many of our schools. And they are one of the highlights of our of our district. No question, our arts, our arts and music programs. One of the things that that is a concern at PV High is the schedule there, and we didn't have time, because of the leadership problems we had had over the past year and the need to find better leadership, which we've done. Uh, the schedule there is problematic and also undermines additional pathways. That the union a couple years ago voted to change the schedule to go to a seven period schedule. Um, and I believe was denied by the administration at that time. And so that's something I know Todd just got going and we were, and we just finished, we just completed the team with an excellent person, but that's something I want to keep an eye on and make a change with, as long as the union wants to continue to make that change at the high school to make that a more equitable and have more expansion and more pathways there. Um, last thing, no, two more things. Um, the union did bring it up, and I have been getting emails. There is concern about combo classes. I know we're in touch about that. I know we've been working on that. But there is there is a staffing concern at many of our schools, and I've just been getting these emails today, and, and we'll follow up about that. But I want to acknowledge the teachers who have been contacting us that this is a growing concern. And it's been a pretty smooth start in many ways, and I want to acknowledge good work, give credit. Um, but oftentimes, complaints, we do get the complaints, and I'm, and I'm starting to get them, and I want to acknowledge those who take the time to make them. And I do want to thank uh, the members of the community. Delia Mendez is a hero. She's an te amazing teacher. A lot of amazing teachers at Watsonville High. I want to thank you for putting on these programs. I will try to attend the next one if I can. I was in Mexico in the last one. Uh, thank you to Roy Rocio for the invitation. Thank you for that. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow. Anyone else? Trustee DeSerpa. I just want to thank Dr. Contreras for your diligence in getting out there and meeting not only community leaders, but trying to forge good relationships with partners and stakeholders in the community. So nicely done. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Trustee Dr. Holm. Thank you for continuing your work on hearing the community and looking for opportunities for furthering conversations. And, you know, we've had conversations about where to go. And I appreciate that, um, you know, I look at the, the you know, wh where you've gone, what you've done in, what is it, five, five four months? Not even. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, that's, a, that's impressive. And I'm looking forward to seeing that continue. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Anyone else? Yes, Trustee Dodge Jr. I'd just also like to, you know, thank you, Dr. Contreras, for making sure we have long-time Watsonville people, you know, just like at Watsonville High School, um, at PV. These are people that want to be here forever. They, they want to be here for 20 to 30 years because this is their home. They came to these schools and, and, and they want to make sure that they're here and they don't want to go nowhere else. Um, also, too, you know, infrastructure has always been a mainstay. You know, one of the reasons why I'm here is because of, of infrastructure. You know, the schools that I represent, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard before, are almost 100 years old. You know, and so when the air conditioning doesn't work at Watsonville High, or when it gets too hot at E.A. Hall, you know, I know we just did the air conditioning, you know, for a little bit. So, you know, we are making progress in the schools that we're at. Um, I think, too, working with this, you know, representatives from the city of Watsonville, you know, again, you know, the, you know, Tamara, you know, another Watsonville person who wants to be here. You know, she doesn't want to use Watsonville as a stepping stone to anywhere else because she lives here. 
And so I look forward, you know, hopefully, you know, we can have better relationships with our city council members, our, our elected officials, because they do want to work with us. And so, you know, um, I think that is going well, and hopefully we can continue to improve on that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And so I'm going to say that I want to thank you, Dr. Contreras, for all of your work in less than not even four months that you've been here. I appreciate you. I appreciate your hard work. I am looking forward to the continuing meetings that we have been having with many of our community partners. One of the things very near and dear to my heart are the CTE pathways and the expansion that we're doing with that. And I'm super uh, appreciative of your support of that and continuing to work with me and several of our community partners to see what we could do to continue to expand that as well. I think you're doing a fabulous job. It's a hard job. It's a tough job. Many days it's thankless. Um, we have really rough days like we did yesterday in PVUSD with many incidents happening. Um, and you and your, your team, um, clearly under your leadership, I mean, that was some of the commending remarks that I got from my constituents out in Green Valley Road. Amazing. Um, so I really, you know, didn't get to identify each one of them individually, Jenny, Mark Virch, all of you, um, Ivan, I believe, was out there. Um, so that's under your leadership. They were clearly prepared and ready to go into that situation and help. And so, again, it's about what in, again, less than not even four months you've been here, how much community you are building. And I'm super appreciative of you and your hard work. So thank you. And with that, I'm going to move us to item 12.2, the uh, sustainable budget team, which I think many of us are very excited about as well. And this report will be presented again by our superintendent of PBUSD schools, Dr. Heather Contreras, and our CBO, Ms. Jenny M. Welcome again. Thank you. Good evening, Board President Augusta, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Dr. Contreras. My name is Jenny M, the CBO, and I'm here to co-present our sustainable budget team plan, um, the general process and timelines. So this is our um, old collective Y, so I'm going to talk about the one that was set tonight. So at PV um, USD, our vision is every student will graduate ready to share their unique skills and abilities and be a positive contributing member of their community and their world. And I think that's going to be very, very important to kind of hold at the center of what we do as we move forward with this process. So the sustainable budget team um, aligns with all of our goals. Um, primarily, I want to call out goal number one, engage and sustain the trust, involvement, and responsibility of all parents and community to promote collaborative programs which result in high levels of success for all students. And that was really the guiding goal as we developed um, what this process will look like. So why are we going through um, the sustainable budget plan? So throughout this past year, um, we've been seeing this chart at every budget presentation. Um, we are not alone. We are not the only district seeing declining enrollment. Many districts across California are experiencing the same thing. So this were, uh, these were our projections as of our 24-25 adopted budget. Um, we are still finalizing our current year enrollment. They are finalized as a census day, which is beginning of October. So um, those numbers are still fluctuating. So we'll give an update as soon as we are able to. And we can see in the last de decade, we've seen about a decrease of 16%, um, or 2,957 students in our district. Um, not including our charters. And the reason that this is important is because this directly impacts our revenues. And at the same time, we can see this uh, visual, which shows the big influx of COVID-related relief funding that we received from the federal and state government. And those numbers are um, statewide. So we can see that a lot of these funds, primarily the largest, which was the ELOG and the ESSER, those are um, sunsetting. Um, ESSER will sunset in, at the end of September of this year. And last year we spoke about 
For the sustainable budget plan, we were imagining this in two phases. So phase one, um, we've concluded that as we're closing out the books, and that was to identify immediate savings, um, mostly through current vacancies and reallocating one-time expenses um, that we're not going to have um, an immediate impact to our programming or operations. Um, and starting phase two, we had promised the community that we were going to make sure that we were doing this in a transparent and collaborative way by forming um, a sustainable budget team with representatives and input from community members across the board. So what does the sustainable budget team look like? Um, and what are the goals and outcomes? So the outcomes will ultimately be to make recommendations to the board and superintendent on strategies to reorganize the district's programs. Firstly, to ensure quality educational programming. Um, and second, for fiscal solvency. The membership, um, we are imagining that the committee will be made up of 24 standing members and six honorary student members, two from elementary, two from middle, two from high school. And um, the reason students, we have them as honorary is because we know that it's going to be difficult for students to make some of the, many of the evening times. So we want to make sure that we're providing opportunities for them during the school day to be able to provide their input. Of the 24 standing members, 12 will be parent representatives. We wanted to make sure that half of the uh, team members would be parents um, because we really value um, what they feel their, their children need and we feel that parents know best what their children um, are needing um, from the school district. So three parents will be from elementary, three from middle school, and three from high school. The application process, which we'll go over later, um, what we'll do is if we get more applications than spots, we will hold a live uh, raffle, essentially drawing, um, random drawing, and we'll live stream that for full transparency. Five of the representatives will be from our labor partners, two PVFT certificated members, two CSA classified, and one CWA member. And three representatives from school state administration, um, principals from elementary, middle school, and high school, as well as two representatives from the district office leadership and two representatives from community organizations. And um, what are we asking from our sustainable budget team members? Um, the most important is that they are committed to working collaboratively, centering the district's priorities and values, um, and to work together to create a mission statement around which all of their um, brainstorming will, re will revolve around. Um, and I wanted to really make this clear that um, zero budget or programmatic knowledge or experience is required. Um, we are going to be providing a lot of educational opportunity to learn through this process. Um, so we are only asking for a commitment, openness to learn, and love for the district. Ability to, end, uh, uh, to attend majority of the in-person meetings from September through December. And we will be offering translation services um, in order to welcome all of our parents, students, and community members um, through this process. Uh, the schedules and timelines, uh, the budget, uh, sustainable budget team will be meeting September through December, um, about every other week for a total of eight meetings. The meetings will be held in person um, on the Wednesday evenings um, that are alternating from the board meeting nights, and then one Tuesday evening in December, and the dates are below. Um, the meetings will be live streamed, and the minutes will be made available on the district website in both English and Spanish, as well as any presentations or data that we're providing. Um, and the budget advisory committee or the sustainable budget team will present their final recommendations to the board at the first January board meeting of next year. And what does uh, the process look like? So in September, October, that's going to be a time to, um, to really dive deep into the budget, into our programming um, and to learn about what's happening at the district and to start brainstorming together. And then through, um, through the end of November, um, it's going to be a time for the team to start narrowing down um, their ideas and to start looking at feasibility. Um, 
we will aid the team by providing data and metrics um, and act to, um, and to uh, provide any information that they need to make their decisions. And then in December is when the team will be finalizing their set of recommendations to bring forward uh, to the board and the superintendent. And as the team collects ideas, um, staff will need to assess and analyze the feasibility of each effort, um, factoring in, of course, the most important, which are impacts to students and programming, um, things like locality, the complexity of making that change, um, are there any implications to our unions? Um, and then also, um, what is the value of making that change? These were the guiding principles and values that we first set forth about a year ago. Um, number one, of course, is maintaining a quality and equitable educational program. Um, ensure continuity of core services. So that's something that we really wanted to emphasize is as we're going through this process, um, looking at programs, looking at the impacts to students, looking at the impacts to student outcomes um, as the first thing. Um, and that is really going to be our guiding principle. And I'm going to um, pass this on to Dr. Contreras. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so some of what we'll look at too when we work with the sustainable budget team is just using some guiding principles. Our number one guiding principle will be remaining student-centered and ensuring that we're prioritizing students' best interests in all of our decision-making. I uh, will also consider what is the impact of the sunsetting COVID funds or those ESSER dollars on student well-being and student learning, uh, student outcomes, parent engagement, um, and in support of increasing student outcomes at all times. Uh, we also want to make sure that we ensure equity and access in all that we do. So we want to make sure any program realignment that occurs through these decisions maintain the equitable access for educational opportunities and that we continue to support all of our students. Uh, and then we will also want to make sure we're always considering the needs of all our students and looking at the vulnerable populations that might be impacted when we're making decisions. Go to the next, thank you. Um, and then we wanna prior prioritize the core educational goals. So any programs that are part of that core educational uh, programming that we need to be offering our students would need to be preserved first. And that needs to be directly aligned to our district strategic goals, which I miss mentioned in the um, look, listen and learn journey, as well as our LCAP goals. And then we wanna consider what are our long-term educational investments. How do we ensure we're considering programs that maybe need additional years to show progress uh, or student outcomes? And then ensuring, as always, that we're using evidence-based data to drive our decisions um, and using evidence-based data to decide on program effectiveness. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers on this item? No. Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and discussion and deliberation. And I'll remind the board that there is this is not an action item, it is a report and discussion item. So any comments from the board? Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, I saw you guys did the timeline of a meeting twice a month. Maybe if, if I could say maybe once a month, it would be my recommendation. Um, yeah, we, we had a long conversation about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that that's just my idea. And, and second of all, um, if we can make, you know, going back to the type of people we're, we're asking to be in those board, maybe if we could make like, um, if we could reach out to our business communities as well. I, I didn't see that. I know we have um, some large companies, a long time companies in the area. Maybe if we can extend an invitation to them, I think that'd be great. Yes, thank you. Um, we do have community organizations. Two, two representatives is what we'll be seeking. I imagine we will reach out to them for an application process as well, like to 
ensure that anyone who might want the opportunity gets the opportunity, but if we have more than we have available seats that we do a lottery with them as well. Um, I think one thing we did not mention about the sustainable budget team meetings is the 24 standing members will be the 24 participating members. However, those meetings will all be live streamed, recorded, and open to any member of the public. So some of those community people, if they um, don't end up on the team, um, could still come and observe the meeting, but also the 24 members on the team act in some ways uh, similar to how a board is. They are representatives of the team and can be um, reached and, and talked to with others like, hey, have you considered this? Or we heard that idea you were talking about, not quite sure how that's going to look, um, so that they become conduits of information and two-way communication as well. I know, but I, I just want to, you know, because, you know, yeah. I don't want to say too many names. We have many large companies in my trustee area, you know, by the high school or by on Walker or just those kind of, maybe, you know, just, mm -hmm. just a courtesy. Hey, you know, we have some spots open. And would you guys be, you know, would anybody be willing to? Absolutely. And argument? if you want to so. submit names of people we should, or companies we should particularly reach out to, please do so. Thank That'd you. be great. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Oh, Trustee Flores. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. I could tell that a lot of thought was put into this um, process, and I, being someone that I would, you know, when you're when you're thinking about joining a committee, you want to know what your commitment is going to be. So I was, you know, as I, as you're presenting, I'm writing down questions, and you answered them all. So, I mean, even putting the all the meetings down in advance. So you know when you're making, the, if you're going to try to uh, apply to be on this committee, you know what you're committing to. So that's great. Um, this is going to be very interesting, you know, because it's going to help us to hear, you know, a, a little louder, you know, what, is, what our community wants. And um, yeah, there's going to be some interesting um, topics. I don't know that it could be done, Danny, in four meetings because, I mean, we've seen the budget's hard and there's going to be some some big topics to tackle. So it is a, it is a large commitment, but I have faith in our, in our parents and in our um, community that we're going to have enough people step up who are willing to help with this, this um, need that we have. Um, so thank you for, for heading this up and putting this together. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Anyone else? Trustee Dr. Holm. One of the reasons why I'm really excited about this is, you know, as th those of us on the board know, it's like, you know, we have various Brown Act constraints. So engaging in, you know, back and forth dialogue, you know, in our board meetings, we can't really do. And I appreciate the work that's happening in setting this up so that there is an opportunity for the types of discussions that can then come to us, you know, for some of those final, you know, votes. But it's like, it, it's, it's a really great opportunity for the kind of public discourse we are, we are committed to. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping, you know, it's like we're, we're going to be facing some challenges. And this is a way to have community discussion about that. And hey, if we come up with solutions through this, that's fantastic. And I think I say if I'm editing as I speak, but you know, it's like, I think this is how we're going to come up with those solutions. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Anyone else? Trustee Bolano Scow. Thank you. I think this is a good plan. I, I like that we're going to live stream and make it very, very transparent. Um, I think perhaps maybe somewhere along the way, uh, well, I guess they're going to be like public board meetings. It would be good to, for everybody to get some updates maybe at a regular board meeting as well so people can check that out and, and provide input. People get lots more ideas. And um, and uh, I'm, I'm really uh, um, grateful and, and I want to underscore the importance of having parents and people with some budget experience. Um, but it's not just having budget experience, but ensuring that we are trying to maintain our values and in, in our programming and, and on our campuses. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Milano-Scout. Trustee DeSerpa? 
Thank you. Um, well, I think having a group of stakeholders make recommendations to the board, I think the board should also have a presentation where we're allowed to give feedback to you ahead of, ahead of some of that work. Because some of us have been here before and have gone through these budgetary processes and we know sort of the order of affairs in what should be cut and when. And so I would like to see a list of all the things that could, like the low hanging fruit that we could easily cut that is far away from the classroom. Um, and I know you have ideas about this already because I know you're all probably talking about that, but we haven't talked about it. So I would like to see a presentation of some of those things um, before December. Like sooner than later. I was just going to ask you to, if you wanted to clarify, because I think they're making a formal presentation in January to the board. What we plan on doing is actually updating the board and doing presentations at every single board meeting from the start of these meetings that we have to keep everyone updated and apprised of uh, what's been discussed, what's happening in these meetings, and what are some of the ideas coming out. But we can absolutely also do a formal presentation. That would be great. I think in past years we've had school services come in or mm -hmm. we had capital advisors or something. They yeah. had come in to help us make what, you know, whatever those priorities would be. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah, could do I, that. I think we've leaned more on the school services side, but, but we've yeah. also had capital advisors for some other things as well. But the district didn't wait until like January to start making cuts. So if we need to start making cuts, we should start now, really. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Deserpa. Student Trustee Esquiza, did you have any input or comments on this one? <laughs> okay, thank you. And I'm really not trying to pressure you. I'm just trying to make sure I'm recognizing you too. All right. Um, oh, and then there was one. Um, I like it, and, and this is a perfect slide. Um, I like that, you, oh, the minutes will be made available on the district's website in both English and Spanish. How about the meeting itself? Will we be addressing having bilingual interpretation if need be, and if possibly in the different dialects that we have represented in the community? Yes, absolutely, and we've already started discussions of starting to plan for having um, interpretive services. It, in the different dialects as well, not just? Yes. Okay, perfect. That was really my big um, question on that. So I, I thank you. I thank both of you tremendously for your work on this. This is really important. I think it's very important to have that community and stakeholder input. Um, it's an opportunity to bring everyone um, to the conversation. So thank you again, because I know you two are going to be working very hard, I think, every Wednesday from now until January. And so, yeah, um, thank you for that. <laughs> and you. sorry, but not. <laughs> but thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So anything else? That's it on that. Um, so what does that leave us with? 14.1, um, our next regular board meeting will be on Wednesday, September 11th, 2024, here in the city chambers. And with that, I adjourn this meeting at 1026 p.m. Eva, um, I'm going to have him sign. You want me to give him this one, right? Yes, that's his. And then Daniel, we have some things for you. And you need to